Like Senator was saying before downstairs, as, as precise as we can be on measures that we're going to take, you know, to suggest for remediation of these things, that would be great because what we want to do is try to set this up as a grants platform so that you guys can request funds to actually get them addressed. So I remember the, the group last week called us the group that got paid by the word because, yes. uh, because we were deep thinkers and planned heavily, but this week we can be kind of short speaking to the point and say this is what we want to do. This is how we want to do it. Again, whether it's high, medium, or low priority, short term, long term. And Josh, um, because you're with the water department, if there are any items that you don't see on this list that you think might be, um, that are action items that you guys are thinking you'd like to do anyways, we can add them. identify them so that we give you another grant, another another couple points in your grant applications. And what we can do too, if you have to leave early, we'll make sure you get the session notes again anyways, that way you can give the reaction because as long as we get your thoughts before we put the report together, even the draft report, that would be fine. So so no pressure, you just you just be thinking, that's why you're here. All right, the first thing we did under infrastructure was um, Quisit Brook, uh, 20 Central Street, the dam, and you saw that came up even in other notes, the chief's notes, the whole bit. Privately owned, what, what should we do maybe to address that problem? What exactly is the problem there? Because that, that was just recently rebuilt. Back in, yeah, uh, you're talking about 20 part. Central Street. Who controls the uh, boards that? Call yeah, well, the, the, the owner of the. Yeah, he controls the boards, but I mean, it's. Do you know who the owner is? Offhand, I do not know. Now, have there been any problems with the, the owner controlling the boards and making sure that all, all the flows are adequate or the water is released in a timely fashion or have there been floods during storm events, extreme storm events? Or? There is an overflow there that runs out behind. Um, Crawford Gear. No, no, on the, on the other side, there's another overflow that runs down behind some uh, houses on Water Street. Behind Water Street <clears throat> overflow, that's actually, okay. didn't know that. Yeah. Um, where, it, just this last um, storm event, we, we saw um, flooding, on, or flooding on Central Street was reported to uh, Town Hall. Um, it turned out to be, um, turned out to be basement flooding right there, um, um, right there, right the Olivia, room. right by Crowford Pier. Yeah. Um, and so you don't think it's, you don't think the, the stream itself is overflowing? I, I can't imagine that it would be, I, I mean, without going down there and obviously looking yeah. at it, I wouldn't, yeah. but I don't, I mean, the groundwater, the groundwater levels are so high right now, yeah. it's, it's been uh, astronomically so with the rain. So would a prescribed action maybe be just um, have good communications or retain good communications with the dam owner? I think we need to also say verify private ownership. A verify who the owner is because he okay. didn't come through in our in the DCR records, the state mm -hmm. records. Um, so I'll check with your office to see if you know. Well, I'm sure they know because we bill them out. So it, the. You know, the, the, we bill them for, for the water usage, so they would know who the owner is. There's okay. no question about that. Okay. The, uh, we had another comment last week about Morse Pond in general, which was that in the 80s, um, when a lot of the residential homes in that area were built, the pond was really low um, due to like a localized drought, and so now a lot of the homes flood more often, is a note that I captured from last week on this topic, too. And if I could make a comment, mm -hmm. when I was working at Crowford Gear in the early 80s, um, I'm sorry, prior to that, um, along the east side of the building, there, were, uh, there was a culvert um, divided with a little island, and the Morses that owned Crowford Gear and owned that property controlled the boards for the dam. But they always worked with the town. If we got a phone call from the town and the town said, drop it down to two boards or three boards, you know, we always cooperated. And then the water would come under Central Street <coughs> and down the two culverts. There were even wood ducks down there. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if that, my, so my question is, I'm sorry, my who, question who is, has, has those, those culverts been maintained so that that water can go on that route <coughs> as opposed to down Olivia Road and Water Street. And so the way you address that, what I put, because just listening to your comments is, 
you got to learn to verify the ownership, keep good communication, obviously if that's happened in the past, but then uh, take regular observations. That way you make sure your culverts are clean, you make sure that water levels aren't too high, pond levels are too high, and the things aren't happening, you know. And then good communication is also with the neighbors to make sure they're not regularly flooding. Now, would this be a high, medium, and low priority thing? Don't you know. we usually fill Yeah, I'll do that. Out. Yeah, that's right. We'll go, yeah, we'll go back. We'll fill it out and then we'll go back over. Okay, the second one, especially, is uh, Main Street, the dam. Now, this is a public ownership. Regular maintenance. Regular maintenance? Yeah, estab established maintenance schedule. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> what are the pro <coughs> problems been there? There's a lot of overgrowth that yeah. comes up on that dam. And that's rebuilt too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, maintaining no, no the dam is really fun. Um, there was an issue raised outside of this process that we should manipulate the water levels, most at Lane Water and all the way up the system, in order to um, keep proper, in order to keep, in order to keep flow down. levels, keep. What did you say? Keep the growth down in the ponds. Keep, keep them the deeper they are, the less growth you have in uh, those fires. And they, and I was thinking of it from flood storage, and I think the comment came from aesthetics, mm -hmm. that um, that in the drought conditions that we bring more water down to the water levels. Stay, stay up. In the summertime. <coughs> we don't. Do we have active? Do we have active boating use on so lane water or? I know no, on my high, section, yeah, I'm on the Queesit, so. Yeah. yeah We've had a so. little bit, but I know we did have a kayaker go over that dam, that main street, a few years ago. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> they hit their head? Uh, they weren't <laughs> looking too good afterwards, I guess. <laughs> Apparently she fell asleep in her kayak and drifted onto the dam. Oh, it wasn't intentional. No, no. I thought someone was being a daredevil. No, 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 no. It was unintentional and very surprising. Sometimes the dam tops, you know, when the water level's too high, you can't see them. Right. You just totally forget about it. They don't look in the distance. They just paddle, and all of a sudden, you straight down. Wow. All right, so we're looking at um, establishing um, a regular maintenance schedule and uh, regulating the water levels as needed properly. Now, the next one, and it came from the uh, regional HM plan, so about nine dams that we should really look at around town. And in general, does any one stick out, or is this something that we should do at all of those dams that were in the uh, Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan. We have a list of those dams, and so that's going to be in the appendices of the report, too. So we're going to address them individually there in the final report. But is there any one, two, three that really stick out for certain issues that we should address or could address right away? We just did Morrison and, and Lane One. Um, in your notes, Sarah, identify that I have a more current list. Than the check, check the list. Yeah. That, that the planning department has against the OC, okay. OC list. That's okay. a hazard mitigation plan, so it's updated. Yeah. This Fr right. French pond has a couple. Um, you're just having a sidebar <laughs> about, no, about what dams there are. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll just send you the. Uh, you can look at the list if you want. I don't, because I'm not from this area, so I don't really. <clears throat> I just have the plan. That's old pond. It's old pond. <laughs> we've had um, we've had some issues um, old pond with water releases in unintentional water releases. We've had to lock it. Okay, so Where is, uh, is there anything in there that might be uh, one thing that uh, didn't come up here is water quality. Does that come up in later? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And what? Lee uh, Anderson's That's old house. It's a really good thing to do when he's here, too. That pond. You know, he's going from the water department. He is. Yeah. Off of Bay Road. <clears throat> Bay Road. I can't. Down. I'm Lee Anderson's. I was hoping I had that. What number is he? He's down, he's down by uh, the old house in Easton. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, we... Is we, um, box? No, it's, it's closer to... Um, you know where the old entrance to the... Um, Campground is on Bay Road. Yeah, it's comes right across there. The water comes across the street. 
Okay. Yeah, because um, so I know some of the people. It's, the, uh, it's part of uh, what's the fuck? Or two eighty six. What's two eighty four? Two eighty six. It's a um, sawmill. Sawmill. It is sawmill pond. We do have localized so, flooding. Sawmill pond. There is localized flooding. See, I think. Did you it's identify that somewhere anymore. once? No, I don't have Sawmill Pond. I don't know if we called it Sawmill Pond Road or if we called it. Does that have another name? Was it? Is what street was that? Was that Lincoln Bay Street? Road. Bay. Bay Road. Bay Road. Yeah. Yes. Probably. <coughs> what would you say in the five hundreds? No. Uh, we know. Forty five, forty six. It's gonna be close. We're four one seven. We're four one seven. So. And so Bay Road is the road that floods, right? Yeah. 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 At around four, around four eighty-six. I'll put some of the down there for that historical yeah. chairs or not. And maybe some other things is uh, again, uh, regular observation, especially on the town-owned, uh, private. You can, again, communicate with dam owners, and uh, maybe look for some potential grant programs. Look at uh, what DER, the Division of Ecological Restoration, does. You can look at the Grand Seawall Program, you know, down in the Dam and Seawall Program. So the Dam um, and Seawall Program isn't just about re uh, removals? No, it's, it's also about too. rehab? Yeah, or the one for rehab, and okay. uh, I think uh, another community outside of my district that one we had in the last round, so. Because we really can't justify the current use. I mean, we can't justify the, the past use, we have to. Right. Okay, then we can check on those. And this one was culvert at Elm. Localized flooding. Localized flooding from the culvert at Elm. Is it something that should be replaced? That was done. Clean, that was done maintained? Not, yeah, because that was done not too long ago. Too. So it's a maintenance issue? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have a note that it's undersized. Is that incorrect? Should I put a question mark next to that? Question mark. Because if EBW wasn't here to, uh, it wasn't in this group. Okay. So should we check and see whether or not it is undersized for the flow yeah. that it has to handle? Yeah. Okay. This is, this is all the lawn area down the street from Town Hall. <coughs> the owner of the property has actually said he'd like to get the water um, moving down. And that's so I'd, I'd like your opinion on that only because from, a, from, from my professional opinion would be the more water that's held in the, in the headwaters on the lawn, the better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's just going to, if you're releasing it, it's going to fill the lawn at Hawaii Street, it's going to work its way to Queeset. Right. So, so if, it's being, if it's being detained here and going out at a slower rate... Part of the problem is his own driveway. <laughs> His own driveway is what's holding it back. He's only got a, what, what's he got a 12 inch pipe yeah. going under there for yeah. all that water? So, so we should just check with, check with landowner um, on, on storage capability. <laughs> Wait, if, if I could put my own slant on it. <laughs> all right. The next one was 305 Turnpike, uh, the mobile home park. And we saw that as a vulnerability and strength. Obviously the, the mobile home park provides housing the people who need housing, but I believe you brought the fact that there's flooding there. Yes, yes, because um, of the 32 to 35 acres owned by the people that own the property, mm -hmm. um, 17, I believe, um, are designated wetlands and undevelopable. We're not supposed to develop them. And, um, they do not maintain culverts. They um, they let water gets run. And did you see a failing septic there too, or so? it's the infrastructure? It's not the system. Right. So the the actual um, <coughs> the the actual system that um, takes the water in and uh, the, and waste, is, the waste yeah. the wastewater the actual the wastewater treatment center it's fine. It's getting deluged because of the piping from. Point A to point B. It's clay or something. It's clay yeah. and and Orangeburg, and broken, and it takes in groundwater, and the groundwater in the park is about twelve inches. How many how many trailer homes are there? Are my, well, originally it was one hundred and twenty two families, but now we're down to about one hundred and two to one hundred five. Well, is it down there? I, I, yes, because what the, they've been doing is when the, the homes are abandoned for whatever reason, they're not. 
putting new ones in. <laughs> that's uh, especially in the front of the park. That, cause Correct. There, because that's because of zoning. I know from overhearing, from, it's, it has to do with the zoning of the trailers. They're non-conforming non non -conforming trailers to the lot, so they don't let them go back in once they take one out on some of the front, on the front lots. The, in my opinion, from my 49 years there, <coughs> the wastewater treatment plant would work if they um, extend or fix Fix the leaching field, retention. You don't need to fix the field. There's one area that's been crushed. Yeah. Um, one at the, the, the east end needs some repairs. And the storm drainage system within the oh, whole yeah. entire community. I remember Stephanie Danielson said at one of the rent control board meetings, the mobile home park is absent a storm drainage system, and I they, thoroughly they have, agree. They have catch basins, and they, they appear to be they so appear to be individual leaching so facilities and dry wells. Yeah, dry wells. Yeah. And they're, they're, I mean, I was there. I was there on Wednesday of this week, and the water was up at the top. Um, yeah. And so they're just not. The, the water's just not moving. Yeah. Because it doesn't go anywhere. It just goes into a pit, and, and 12 inches there. down is the water table, so you only get 12 inches of okay. leachate. So we need to upgrade. Yeah, the existing infrastructure is broken. You have groundwater and stormwater infiltration, so you really got to fix it. That's, yep. The existing yeah. infrastructure just doesn't work. What was Wednesday's um, uh, flow problem at the wastewater treatment plant? Oh, the frack tanks overflowed? Yeah, what was that about? They, 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 they it was the groundwater. Yeah, the groundwater goes into the system, floods the field. The field can take 36,000 gallons a day. Once that happens, the field gets hydro hydraulically saturated. And then what they do is they pump the water back out of the field. It's already treated into two frack tanks for people at home. That's They're like tractor trailers that are just to hold wastewater. And there's two of them. And when those fill up, they overflowed, and then they, they weren't keeping an eye on them. And, right. and they that have to, happens. every rain event, they literally have to have like three tractor trailer trucks come and pump those out. Mm. And every those, rain event. And those tract <laughs> those frack tanks have been there, they were initially put there on a temporary basis, and that was at least three to five years ago. Yeah, I'd say at least three, yeah. This is a pretty high priority. Uh, yeah. Maybe because we'll, and, you, and you recognize it as septic and, and uh, wastewater, or wastewater and stormwater? As two separate systems. So, for an action item, would it be repair, crushed leach field area, upgrade stormwater drainage capacity, and replace That's piping? An, this is an ongoing issue with the owners of the parks, not, not, not the residents, but the owners of the park. <coughs> they are not doing what they need to be. They're in court. We're in court. So, well, you need to. Uh -huh. Be aware of that. Right. Yeah. Right. Short term, because you obviously got to fix it, because it was supposed to be a short term solution three years ago, but it's going to be ongoing because you're going to have to chase this one down. I'm just going to make this note here and hope this is so important. All right. <coughs> Next one we'll be talking about stream continuity and culverts for um, all the streams basically listed in the Mass Audubon uh, stream continuity report. But in general, how do your culverts stack up as far as are there maintenance issues? Are there culverts that you know that are broken that maybe could or should be fixed that we should be putting in for some grant funding right away in the, in the coming rounds? Anything jump to mind on anybody? I, I'm sorry, you go first. Oh, no, the only, the only culvert I know that uh, is broken is, is in the process. It's already been in the process. It's just, yeah, it's, uh, and it was South, under South Street. Was, yeah, South Street, South Street, yeah. And yeah. It, it was under South Yeah. It's on a major floodway. Um, it's not a culvert, it's a storm piping, storm, storm um, drain piping. There's a few places in town, and I don't know if it fits here, there are a few places in town where older pipes are undersized and not maintained. Um, and and, and I, I see them, as, they're undersized perhaps because they're clogged. So I don't know if you put it under. So these are pipes. These are these aren't culverts. These are stream. These are these Storm are pipes drainage pipes. under drainage pipes under streets. So you're thinking Whoa. like maybe doing some investigation with like those. You know how they have the cameras that they send down there to see if they can be unclogged or. There's a stormwater mapping going. Stormwater oh, yeah. mapping going on in town, um, and we should okay. we should match. Ooh, Bill. 
match the, your, remember your project, your yeah. group project? Yeah. Yes, let's do that oh, here. Say, so for the rest of you, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a storm water, the stormwater mapping and key outfalls yeah. of the maps, yeah. of key outfalls of the storm the drainage. The the um, when those outfalls are in sensitive resource areas, okay. they're the first ones to be to check for maintenance issues and um, possible upgrades okay. of Thank the um, capacity of the area, uh, capacity of the drainage system. So that we, so our ACECs, our wetland areas um, are uh, uh, not being impacted as much. So. Well, the, even I when we have this example, we have a storm drainage pipe that goes under the end of 2nd Street. And um, uh, it is filled with debris and non functional. And the last time they did plans to to work in the community, they didn't even pick that up in the plans. Yeah, clear up culverts, clear, clear. Is and I storm drain. Like a culvert maintenance plan or something? Yeah, so if you want to do the group thing, what you can do is um, match key uh, stormwater conveyance issues, which would be the piping and the culverts, to sensitive environmental and social areas, which are, are sensitive receptors. And that way you prioritize them. That helps you prioritize the ones that really have to go first. That's my own group project that you were talking about. We still do that. Yeah, and I think, I think that's key. It's a way for cities and towns to help knock out those priority areas. And once you do it in the tough area, it becomes easier to do it in, in the <coughs> priority areas. The, the other area that I had mentioned last week was the, um, the culvert that I remember used to have uh, great egrets migrating. And, um, the, and I was noticing it uh, so that I could tell you at this meeting. It is marked by um, two guardrails on Route 138, right in the vicinity where the um, Meadow View Commons, mm -hmm. 36 mm -hmm. units are going in. Mm -hmm. So that whole area there, that was years ago. Um, where does the uh, stream come under 138? You, you won't see it now, it's all grown in. Yeah, is it, but is it but the this, north of Purchase or is it south of Purchase? It would be south of Purchase. Uh, it's south of Purchase. It's south of the um, Mobile Home Park and before Cinnamon Ridge Drive. Yeah. You'll see two, Wait, it's, yeah, I you'll know see exactly two guardrails. And there used to be, you know, in heavy rain events, it would flood and flood yeah. back into West yeah. Bridgewater because my kids used to ice skate carriers. down there. Yeah. Old Carriage. Oh, OK. It is just, right, just right south, there. Just south of Okay. Yes, at the Meadowview Yes, so that's why I brought it up. And you said you're starting to match the stormwater outfalls yes. now? That is great because that'll fit right in with this. Yes. All right, so that's good. That's kind of a solution. And then what you can do with that data is match it to this. All right, the next thing that was rolling pines package treatment. Got a problem there? Uh, there's been ongoing problems at rolling pines with um, some of their fields. One of the fields failed. They had to replace it, and I guess from speaking to someone at DEP, the other field is in failure, and they have to replace that as well. So we have to replace the other field? Yeah, the other discharge field. Yep. Not to mention, Connor, a lot of complaints about odor from the tanks, but we've addressed those. The odors go away if the fields are working. That helps, and if you seal the lids when you put them down in the parking lot. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> so. Again, so it's in flow. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to place the other leach field and help to control the odors there. Those were the two complaints that came up last time. And he said seal the lids of the manholes. Yeah. Control and, and, odors by well, seal. Well, control the odors. Yeah, control the odors. That's how they've been maintaining the odor control by yep. sealing the, uh, the, the uh, lids down. So that's, these are pretty prescribed fixes. Next was Bay Road, 224 Bay Road. It said it was a confluence of three culverts, town owned. And they said there's problems there because of the, that confluence of the three culverts. Yeah, this is a, it's a system. Um, this is up near Pheasant. I'm going to say Pheasant Hill, but that's not right. Pheasant. Oh, Fox Road? Not no, Fox Road. it's between, some, uh, it's, uh, it's north of Summer Street. Yeah. And so it's Pheasant Street. Pheasant Street. Pheasant Road. That one. So 
there's a house here. Yep. Yeah, we still there's have the map here if anybody needs reference. Oh, perfect, perfect. So I just wanted to show you, you're not your town. Okay. You know this stuff. I know the town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a spot where, there's a spot right at that, in, right, um, at that street intersection where here, it's an open stream, yep, yep. comes into a culvert, and it goes to a catch basin here, and it goes, and then it comes down this way. It's coming here on diagonal, and then it's coming down the street here, and then it's going out there, and it's um, floods, it floods regularly. And this came up because he put a septic system in the in the floodway. Yeah. So yeah. it was a uh, J decision recognized it as a description of this, this system right here. Right now. Yeah. You know, have you, I don't know if you I don't know if you've seen it. I didn't know if it was theoretical yeah. or Yeah, no, you could actually see the yeah, you can see the Yeah, and yeah. Right. And so the system's here, the system's yeah, that's where the natural stream is, but it's actually, see that line? Yep. It's coming in here and over there. So I don't... What so what kind of a fix can we prescribe for that? Um, I think it goes into prioritizing the stormwater. It's one of the priority, it's one of the priority areas in the stormwater system. So we want to make this a priority stormwater uh, retrofit site. I'm sorry. You want to make this a priority stormwater retrofit site, basically? Yeah. On, okay. What do you think? I think it doesn't have anything to do with drinking water. <laughs> 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 now we're taking advantage of just being a town. Of you just knowing the town. Um, that's it, doesn't, been, that's, it doesn't have anything to do with drinking that's water. Been, um, that's been doing that for years. I remember yeah. when. It's it, so it's chronic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that that would be a good one to prioritize. Maybe stormwater grants come up. That would be a good one, just because of its nature and it's unusual to get a three culvert convergence like that. It's very unusual. The next one was septic management. That was town wide, and we already talked about some of the issues. I would imagine that uh, high groundwater tables probably giving you incredible headaches right now. Uh, yep. As far as areas where you have to really have volume, with maybe a small package and the whole bit, that's going to be driving you crazy. Yeah, it's, um, if you get an abnormally high water table, we're looking at where the water table lands, not where the actual modeling of the soil is, and it's not really true high, a high water table, but you, you're out there observing it at this time of year, that's, you get what you get when you dig a hole, when it's, you get an extra eight inches of rain in November. That's it. So, um, that's, and you know, surprisingly, we had a perk test last, in between the last time we met and this time we met. Right next to New Pond, and we had groundwater at 76 inches, and that was big surprise. Yeah, yeah, big surprise. I expected 13, 14 inches, but the ground came up enough where it, that was pond level, wow. and pond level was high. So. Yeah. So the groundwater levels can really give you fits, and you're subject kind of to the uh, anomalies in the weather. Like this has been an incredibly wet fall. I think they said 60 of the 90 days we've had measurable rainfall. Mm -hmm. which is probably a tenth of an inch or greater, which is amazing. We haven't had a fall like this in forever. <coughs> so that, that does um, give you some problems. So as far as septic management town-wide, what would you say is a fix? Say if you were going after something to help you maybe address the issue, what would you look at? I would look at uh, maybe putting a regulation in place for future Title V inspections. Uh, for what, the way Title V inspections read right now, if your septic system's one inch out of the groundwater, it yeah. passes to maybe make a regulation saying that when you do a Title V inspection that the system must be proven to be at least two feet out of the groundwater. Because with the EP system, <coughs> two, feet, two feet of separation will give you enough where you're getting the, the cleaning of the effluent. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they double it. That's why we get the four foot number. So maybe two or three feet, given maybe three feet. That way we get a little um, people making mistakes. You know. So a new regulation would really help you. What I'm saying is, is your new regulation for Title Five inspections to incorporate uh, groundwater fluctuation yeah. concerns. What's the what's the ramification for the homeowner if you had if you had that regulation in? Uh, more of them would fail. 
And then, and then what? They'd have to replace the systems and raise them. So it would have to be mounted. So yeah, mount, mount. mount. So sometimes we have systems. We have one going in right now. It's 12 feet in the ground for some reason because what they did is they built the house up. It was on a hill. They put the system out front, and then they backfilled over it. And it, I'm surprised it works because it's so deep in the ground. It's not supposed to be any more than three feet of cover mm -hmm. over it because it suffocates it. Um, so there are some deeper systems. So sometimes you wouldn't get the the pitcher's mound effect, but you'd, it's still called a mounted system because you are yeah. pumping to it. Is, um, is, how well does our comprehensive um, wastewater management that? Has it still got good, good recommendations in it? As far as Title V? Well, I assume that I, I think what I'm, what I'm thinking, yes, but what I'm thinking is, are there prioritized areas where there's failures? I, I think that anywhere that, and we don't have a regulation yet, but it's something that we, maybe should be looking at is, um, you know, areas that are already sewered or going to be sewered, making, you know, if you're not, if you don't have three foot of separation, maybe we say that you you must hook up, you know, if there's a fight. We don't have any regulation saying That'd that great. you have to That'd hook up, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, Systems, the, around the septic, the, the septic treatment plants work better the more volume they have. Right, yeah. yeah. They don't like sips, they like gulps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, did I That's answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. So you'd be looking maybe for right, revised regulation with three feet of separation? Or two, uh, two, 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 two to three. Two you know, minimum, yeah. Yeah, two, two to minimum. Oh, okay. well, then we did talk about the um, flood drought cycle, right? So as you said, and Bill pointed out, with yeah. the extra rain, maybe thinking ahead 20, 30 years. Well, that's where I was getting the two, three two, feet. Two, three is that. Oh, yeah, the three feet, you know what yeah. I mean? That way, because the life of a septic system on the low end is going to be 20 years. On, yeah. a, on the good end, it's going to be 40. Yep. So that, there's your life. So. so you really have to, yeah, you really have to anticipate these changes. All of these changes right. are going to apply to what you're doing. Well, so and it's you're not something new. Other towns have done that. Yeah. Um, we, we're pretty much straight Title V, except for a few regulations and policies we have in place when it, when it has to do with vacant homes. So the second regulation you spoke of, special board of health, uh, second board of health regulation you spoke of is require hookup to in in when oh, septic is available when, when sewer, sewer is available. Sewer is available. <coughs> yeah. if, if you're not able to make that three feet of separation, yeah, if you can't yeah. maintain yeah. that, fail. You, yeah, yeah. If you, well, if you fail, I think the way it's written now in this in the sewer regs is you must hook up anyways. Yeah. So if you don't have separation. Yeah. But what say give it for instance. There's like three new septic systems that are brand new on Foundry Street that the pipe's going to go past. Uh -huh. But say they transfer ownership and it's four years from now and they, we, make, we require a deep hole observation for the water table and it, all of a sudden the water table has risen a few feet or a foot and a half and it doesn't have the main, they could, we could write away regulations, maybe have them tie in. On sale, you think? On point of sale. Point transfer, transfer, title, yeah. yeah, transfer to ownership is only time title five is usually done. Yeah. Unless it's a condo or a shared system. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's good. That's that's usually an appropriate time to do it. Plus by then you will have uh, the infrastructure in place. You're gonna be tying into the regional wastewater treatment plant. Right. So yeah, it will anticipate it. We're 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 charging betterments even if Yeah, they're paying for the pipe anyway. Yeah. For the pipe anyway, so it's almost a fair to complete it that you know, if you're gonna do it you might as well if you're gonna pay for it, you might as well look Get some of the money. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, that's that's one thing. A lot of people don't want to pay the operation maintenance costs. So they, they, their theory is, I'm gonna ride it out until my system fails, then I'll hook up, and that's what we don't want. We want them to hook up right away to get that nice, rich flow of effluent into the treatment plant. Adjust your adjust your rates. So I, I'm not charging. No, no, I know. <laughs> Before, can I have one question about the septic? This may not be an issue here. I think we talked about it a little bit last week, but is most of the drinking water supply, is it all groundwater all well? Groundwater. All groundwater well. Is there any um, nitrogen problems that you'd want to address through a septic, a third septic regulation? No, we're, we're actually pretty well um, uh, protected through uh, open. Open space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and then you guys have the sole source uh, drinking water too. And we observe our zone two regulations for our septic. Yep. 
So, so it's good coordination there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either credit land or treatment. Yeah, it's something your town, your town water reports, <coughs> consumer confidence reports. We try to get hold of all the documents before we come in to get familiar. Yep. Yeah, you guys are good. Are any of our wells um, particularly low ele elevation in flood prone areas? No, as far as um, the actual public wells. Yeah. No, as far as like get, having well infiltration from surface, surface water. water. Um, possibly Station 6, Wheaton Farm, um, but that's not, um, you know, you'd have to ask pretty substantial flooding for, uh, for that, for the reservoir there, was it the Fulton, the Ford Reservoir to back up yeah. into our wells. Okay. That would be the only one, and that's not, it's never been an issue. This. Okay. So this would be long-term Station Six, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean that's a long term, long term issue, uh, long term as in not happening probably today, like but might happen in the future. Yeah, low priority, long term. Low, low, yeah, low, low. Okay, if you're saying low, low, yeah. yeah. So there's only one that's vulnerable. Yeah. Only one, only one of our, and there's yeah. four wells. Seven. Seven wells, right. and only one is vulnerable. Seven, yeah. Okay. All right. The next one was um, 80 Prospect Street. This was called out by address and says localized flooding. Right, that's the pond, that's the, the old cranberry bogs at the curve on Prospect Street. Um, and it's, a, it's the, um, right now the, there's a, um, there's a culvert between his bogs, between bog one and bog two, between the bog next to the street and then the next one that is busted. And so if he makes So broken that, culvert? Okay, so, so it's private, so we have to fix it. You can yeah. to fix it. Okay. And that's an active bug? No. It's not an active bug. No, he'd like it to be. He'd like it to be? Yeah, it's a it's an older it has not been has not been um, in use for well over five years. All of them or just the one with the, the three the three are the three are all abandoned. Okay. Yeah, what if you want? Um, work to convert them into wetlands to get a conservation credit or something, a ta conservation tax credit converted into wetlands to turn into stormwater storage, so they just go back. DER does that too, they have a, a cranberry bark program that Alex has. You should, you should put an asterisk there because this guy is considering, he's in, a, he's in active consideration for re, uh, for putting at least one of the bogs back into okay. production. Well, so that would be, that would be a really, you'd like to, They'd like to know about the option you speak of. All right. Well, you might get credit. I'll put DER the DER program. They might want to take a look at. Right by the yes, okay. Is that should that be an official action item to say put homeowner in touch with DER about bog retirement? That'd be great. But um, I'll put that in anyway. That way, what we may be able to do is as a, you know bring him talk to the town too because if he's going to bring the bog back in. He'll have to talk to you about pesticide management, he'll have to talk to conservation, he'll have to talk to planning, but then we might be able to have DER down, and if he says, I'd like to have one of the bogs active, but two of the bogs, you know, that might not be able to do anything with, he might say, we can sit and let him go back to natural wetlands for flood storage capacity, that might really help. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is very timely, because he is presently in uh, permit review mm -hmm. at the state level, he's, mm -hmm. he's, in, a, he's in a final order, um, final wetland order, and um, the state of these three bogs is okay. under consideration right now. Yeah, and this is just food, again, food for thought. If it, if it I don't think that's that come up, so I really appreciate that. Okay. Um, well, that you also mentioned last week the, the concept that Easton could be the headwater storage, similar to the yeah. Charles River slide we showed, yes. so that kind of project. That's a great ties into point. what you said. And um, is there a way to map the, is there, maybe we, maybe we can use the green infrastructure maps absolutely. to look for potential storage areas? Yeah, yes. absolutely. So that's if what we that's have, for. that's not already there, let's, that Oh no, that's, that's what it is for, that's all part of, of the whole process. So when you look at your GI maps over here, you can look at the bogs, look at the flood storage you have in that area, and like Eric and said, a lot of this is unprotected green infrastructure, so if all of a sudden you can get it in an agreement, get it protected, use it for flood storage in a headwater area, that's that's gold all the way around. It's a win for everybody. So that's something that that's that's where you start at the conversational level, and this might be something that nobody realized they could do. So 
Never yeah. hurts. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, even our own conservation lands are well suited to um, yeah. for storage capacity. Yeah, that's something you could look at too. All right, the next one was um, Prospect Street at uh, Railroad Railway. That's also private, but we talked about flood issues there too. So that, did that just flood recently over the last, I think it overtopped the road. Somebody told me it overtopped the road by 33 Prospect. Um, there is, a, oh. there is a small fix, but it may not be under, the culvert might be undersized. That culvert is actually a, so, it's actually a manhole and drainage pipe. Going, yeah, going down to the stream. Going down to the stream. And it might, it's undersized or... Where is that origin? I don't even know where that originates. I know it comes down the railroad tracks and comes into the guy's yard, but where does that originate? Right. I've been, I mean, it doesn't seem to be directed flow. It seems to be surface, surface runoff. I never saw a pipe. I mean, I've been looking over at that side. I can't find the pipe. Because anyway, I don't have an iron. Right, so what you, mm -hmm. so what you want to do? What you want to do is probably uh, check uh, check the size of the culvert right away. If you're trying to channel something this way through a pipe that's this way, it ain't not going to work. And then check the state of the culvert. If it is adequate it's enough, if all of a sudden you can't find it because it's yeah. you have yeah. to park the the is that trees. Issue with like the railroad. That is a the railroad, uh, they, would they be, because it all comes from. I don't think Easton wants uh, MBTA to touch that road, do they? Uh -oh. No, but I'm no. just saying. <laughs> no. I'm just saying, I mean, I'm. We're not going to encourage it any use. Because I know, yes. I know that the DPW put that catch basin in. Yeah, for the, for the it, it's not a culvert, it's a catch basin it's in catch the church. And, uh, and, but I mean, once again, yeah, that gets inundated with water. I actually, I was actually speaking to. Greg Swan about raising the <coughs> raising the height of the of the um, catch basins great so that more water is stored in the ground and not not going into not going um, into Beaver Brook or whatever it is. Is it Beaver? Is it Black? Is it what? Okay, so that's something that you obviously got to check out first before you come up with some type of remediation. If it's a catch basin, then maybe it's a cleaning thing. You obviously don't want the idea to touch it. So. These are all sensitive. These are all part of that stormwater oh, yeah. sensitive areas. The next one was Purchase Street at the Dog Lake. Right. It, and it's, a, it's a mix of public-private public public ownership. That's right. Just uh, the Dog Lake just before the um, Lombard, Lombardi's home and then the Golf Eastern yeah, Country Club yeah, is behind yeah. it. That um, flooded out. Um, More than once. Yes. Yeah, what do you think is the culprit there? What are we looking to fix? Probably that, the undersized. The undersized culprit here. Yeah, because they just, they, there was a uh, break in the culprit and they replaced that one probably within the last 10 years. Yeah, I don't know. And when you drive over, you can see the patch where they replaced the it, well, maybe that resolved the problem, um, because I'm, I can't. I can't. I don't know when the last time it flooded, but I was trying to go Wednesday, and it was <laughs> oh, it yeah. was that bank full on Wednesday, so it was <coughs> on both sides of the wall. street. It was not the, the culvert wasn't um, wasn't holding back the water. All right. I want to say check. Uh, obviously, check the size of the culvert. You might have to resize it, and then uh, check the state of the culvert too. You want to make sure that inside it's not all clogged up too. A lot of times that'll happen, when you, especially with the um, the flood and drought cycles. Sometimes you get mud and sediment that cakes up inside these culverts so mm hard -hmm. you can't even get through it with a hand auger. It's, it gets like cement. Um, this some is street, one of those old stone ones, right? Is it one of those old? Is it a, is it like South Street? Those old granite stone? I I or think they put a pipe in there. Oh, okay. Oh, so they, lined, they probably lined it with something. You know, a lot of what they used to call the old farmer's culverts used to be field stone and mortar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That when they went to redo culverts, if they thought they were still in the shape, they'd line them. They put like a corrugated in there or a PVC type right. of pipe. Yeah. So that they can go too. Uh, the next one was um, oh, Summer Street at Patty's Path um, and Baltic. To the end, it looks that like was the electric. The electric. That was yeah, electric. electric. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it sounds like they're looking at putting a new substation in or something? Near yeah, it's on the street. Yeah. 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 yeah, so that, that'll probably solve itself. Ooh. But let's identify that it's happening. Something, it's a so good thing. Yeah. At least the, so that um, the new substation should help correct. Yeah. Okay. 
Is it so? It's it's outages. Yeah, power outages. I mean, it happens in other places in town. I just know because I live in that vicinity. Right. That's high priority. Absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Get a I did not make that. I have one. <laughs> I actually went out and got one. <laughs> so it won't happen anymore. Okay, so the new substation should help. Um, and I that's a quick short term high priority series. Do we want to consider the fire chief's comment about veg management for outages here? Yeah, I thought it was a good comment. I didn't come up here, but I was an MVP in Brockton, and um, the National Grid guy, I was in his group, and he said that they've moved to a four-year plan instead of a five-year plan. It used to be a five-year plan for trimming, and now they're in every community every four years. So that should help, too. So four-year plan for trimming? Yeah. That's what National Grid is on a four-year plan but now. When they come to trim, don't they ask you permission first? Oh, not always. Aren't the trees on the town road? Oh, no. These are old. I've gotten a slip on my front door before. Yeah. Right. And from the company saying, can we trim your tree? And I'm like, sure, if it's going to be, yeah, yeah, trim away, you know. But um, I didn't know if they always ask or they just did it out of the better or the good. I used to work for a veg management company in Chicago, and they only needed permission for removals. Ah. But it's probably, yeah. it could be, diff it was a different utility, so yeah. it could be different. No, this, they didn't want to remove the tree. They just kind of walked it at an angle. Just yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, yeah. taking limbs off of, off of uh, utility lines. I think one of the issues that comes up, at least for us, too, is when it's a single tree, not they're not in their management program. Mm -hmm. You know, we have trees come down. We talked about management issues. And they're very hesitant to send a whole crew out for one tree, and they're right. We have one right now that's right on the wire, right over the wire. We've called them, we've talked to them. They just they said, oh, we don't want to get a detail out there to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's going to take out your power just as easily as a oh, whole sure. tree fall, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. being able to be responsive to the smaller situations might help too. Are these the cross connections? Are these, the, these are the connections onto the road, onto the. This is right on 138. Oh, it's actually it's the main. It is the main line. Okay, which is oh. neat because the next one, after we decided to discuss in this, we started saying, well, just electric utilities town-wide. I think that's a great comment. You know, be as responsive to the small situations as to the large ones. Because the small ones, one tree can trigger uh, an outage for the entire town. So maybe look at all things equally. Mm -hmm. Is that something you think, you guys think, too? Yeah, I do, yes, because it, when the last Gypsy Mont Caterpillar uh, event that we had here, created so much dead wood, especially, I remember driving down 106 and saying, there's total devastation uh, uh, over by the regional there. Mm. Total devastation, and all those trees are dead now. So it's not just limbs, it's removal of dead trees dead as well. Yes. We may talk about this later. Is there a town forester who communicates with the National Grid? We do have a, we do have a, um, Todd is sort of Tree warden. Tree warden. Tree warden. Tree warden. Every town has to have a tree warden. Is it Todd? Is it Todd? Todd takes her. Some, some cities have their tree wardens sort of on point for the, communicating their priorities to national grid. Yeah. That's what I put more of the town, too. Yeah, yeah, through the DPW. That's a great idea. Yeah, no, that's just what I put. And when you look at all the problems and the people, you have to work with the town, too, because the town usually has a really good feel. But they're getting the calls from the citizens, too, before National Grid will. So your forester, your tree warden, your DPW, they can say, yeah, it's one or two trees right here. These people are afraid because the limbs are touching the wires right now. Let's go, let's go out there and address it together and ensure the people are with. We're listening. The next one's communication system, emergency town wide now. We were talking about uh, redundancy of the communication system. Like if everything else goes down, can you guys still get in touch with one another when you're addressing emergencies all over the town? I don't know if the fire chief had a comment on that. Or... He's downstairs. Yeah. Well, I think the uh, Eastern Housing Authority had a problem in March. <coughs> when we had that terrible nor'easter this past March, I know that the Eastern Housing Authority was having a communication problem. And I don't know if it was because the town was in was changing their uh, communication system. I don't. I'd have to ask Kathy. Well, didn't we all lose power? 
Uh, we did. It, it much? Yeah. Right, but with the phone systems as well, that's everything. We've got, I mean, we've got portable radios. So the housing authority probably should look into the portable radios so that they can communicate directly with you. So under so it was a strength but us housing authority needs portable radios. Yeah. If they don't have one to find out. Yeah, because I was up there in March when the power was out. Mm -hmm. Um handing out flyers, letting people know that we had a warning Right, right. So, I was going to say, I know in Bridgewater, like our fire department keeps a really close eye on our housing authority. I'm sure that your town does as well, because you have a vulnerable population there. Yep. You know, so. and this one came up universally. Everybody said this. Limited public transit town-wide, especially for the elderly, the older population, vulnerable yeah, population. Elderly yeah. What can we do with that? Well, there's been some conversation with, uh, with Brockton about extending BAT. With BAT? Okay. Yeah, but that's, that's an early stage of the discussion. That's a good thing, though. That's where we start. Do other surrounding towns have municipal like, systems? Like, does Stoughton have a BAT? Because I don't remember the BAT bus being in Stoughton. No. I think BAT goes to Stoughton, actually. Yeah, I think so. they have a line. I think they have some, like, a Maybe it's just a limited service. Goes to, does it go to Five Corners, Sharon? Yeah, I think it, it's limited. I think I actually remember hearing that yesterday at a meeting. So why don't we just make it seven days a week? Yeah. I'll get two drivers. Split ship. They have multiple drivers, so they could, they could split their hours. But the other thing is it's also to so council on aging extend extend yeah, extend hours of extend hours of council is it yeah, right it's council on aging, aging. Mm -hmm. yes. But the other an option is uh, there's a, a transportation company right in the industrial park. VHS. What, yes. Yeah. What about yeah. getting them you know as opposed to bat? Contracted out. Yeah. Nope. It's going to be more popular like with the Ubers and the Lyfts and like having alternate, there, there's more talk about that. But I think the, this lady was talking about the cost, cost, cost issue. Yeah. Yeah, you know, for individuals to, yeah. you know, to shoulder. It is to shoulder the cost. Over. So, yeah, so is, there some way with it, is there some way we could get a group uh, contract? Uh, a town, I I'm talking, like I don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Just well, like through Southeastern uh, Regional Services Group or something, like town wide, do an RFP, you mean, and try to get so service for like this. So you get a lower rate for the individual. Kind of like we do with the trash. Yes, kind of like we should do with the trash. Yeah. Or, you know, DPW supplies or water supplies. You do group purchases, office mm -hmm. supplies. You know what? We'll put that in there as a point of discussion. I mean, maybe um, look at a regional services contract group. You don't know. Could be that they are. Last option, but at least look at it. It's a good idea, actually. I think. How does, how does the bus run now? How do they do it? Better? Weekdays. It's just weekdays. Yeah. And you just not call up. Or you call up. You schedule an appointment for a ride. Uh, I know that just from over here and stuff, one of them are there, and, and you schedule an appointment for a ride, and then they schedule a list, and they pick you up and take you to your designation. So stuff. if you have to say you had to go to Roach Brothers and somebody had to go to whatever, yeah. some yeah. orthopedic, and, yeah. and you'd sit there and wait for the wait in the bus. Until they get multiple, no, it's, multiple it's, it's, they have they have they send out a, 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 a monthly newsletter that gives you the days they go to specific places right. and, and then if you have doctor's appointments you call and sketch the doctor's See, appointment is more of what Mark was talking yeah, about. Mark okay. doctor's um, and the I will make a comment on this. The fee, um, I think it's three dollars one way and four dollars round trip. It could be up to six dollars recently because they added buses. But it's, they say it's um, a donation. It's not required, mm. believe it or not. It might be funded by a grant, right? some of that, or yeah. offset by a grant. I know that our senior center does it the same way. They have, like, they'll say, oh, we're going to the Rich Brothers. They actually go to the La Plaza in Easton and um, for, or the, for doctor's appointments on the second Wednesday. So you could try to get an appointment during a window. 
Yeah, they go to the Walmart or the market basket. Oh, yeah. But I think what they're saying is they maybe need more opportunities even. Yeah. So as I, the population ages. What yes. I've written is to look into and support increasing public transit options, have longer hours, and seven days a week by considering all the things you guys talked about. So the bat from Brockton, yeah. hours at Council on Aging, yeah, I put hours the agency at the Industrial Park, and the Regional Purchasing Agreement. I put down hours and capabilities at the COA too, because if you extend the hours and you don't have the, the like say the drivers, then that's you've got a bus sitting there. You know, it's like a, right. hopefully we'll have, we'll schedule someone for these this block of hours. I think you probably have to hire one more driver. Yes. Yeah. Plus, yeah. plus the thing with, with extending the um, the to seven days a week, you're not just talking about the driver, but you're talking about uh, the the staff in the office <clears throat> who use the two way for the drivers. Right. Yeah. Because when they're taking people the to doctor's appointments, right. Thank you, the dispatcher. Yep. Um, Oftentimes, the, the person that's at the doctor's office calls, well, the way it works is mm -hmm. they call, I'm, I'm through with my doctor's appointment now, and then they wait, and then the dispatcher tells the bus whoever's closest to go and pick the person up at the doctor's appointment. That's why I think that regional idea is not a bad idea, because the, the, those, um, like the, the place in the industrial park would probably have their own dispatcher. Sure. Yes. You know. You do that. Um, that's an interesting idea. I'm going to put Josh on this day. The last we, oh, go on. Oh no, go oh, no way. So I mean, just be, before we leave infrastructure, um, we've we've been speaking in terms of um, the effect of flooding mm -hmm. on our groundwater supplies, drinking water supplies. Um, there's also the drought effect. Um, 2016, um, we were still we were still in drought state for a pretty long time. Is um, did you see any effect on our and if and if and if our droughts were to extend? Fortunately, we've seen very little um, change in well levels uh, throughout, throughout the um, system. Throughout so the aquifer is pretty, pretty robust. Well. Yeah. So uh, this is a strength. This is our groundwater. Oh, our, yeah, drinking oh, water, our drinking water, groundwater, yeah, the, water supply. The, the supply. Is is and with, and with the with the uh, water advance, uh, that's helped. That definitely helps a lot. Um, now, your opinion on <coughs> and this is <coughs> private wells are <coughs> licensed for irrigation and pot potable water through the Board of Health. Is it something that you think that private wells should also have a, um, a uh, they have to follow the watering regulations as the public water supply. We're all drinking from the same pot of water. How many straws can hold? Yeah, yeah, exactly. How many straws can fit into the, the pot? I mean, should, should is that something that then uh, that Board of Health should make a regulation that foot says follow the drinking water bans even for private wells? Or you think that's something in the future that we might need? Or? Um, Just your opinion. Yeah, yeah no, I I think you. Me personally, I think you can walk in like that fine line of telling people what they can and can't do. Um, I, don't I just saw Kyla brought it up in the, in the slide. Education oh, <laughs> might be an important factor too, because some people just don't think that way. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, I mean, you don't know yeah. how many questions you get. Uh, well, I get that. It's like, you know, we've had so much rain, how can you have a water in it? And it's like, well, we don't. We, we just go by what the DEP says, mm -hmm. um, and we got to keep our consumption down to a certain gallon per person per town. So that's how these get. Mm -hmm. um, and this, and if these wells are being constructed, you know, pay to play. Mm -hmm. Look, if you can't, if yeah, you're I mean, using I, the town water, then, then build your own well. Um, but maybe, <coughs> maybe the issue, if not, if ban is, if ban is potentially politically dangerous. How about just uh, time of day restrictions? Like we, <laughs> like, like we do on, on a regular... On a regular basis, right. yeah. time of day restrictions. Maybe ed educational, just sending out, right. taking our well list, which didn't exist before I got here, but now does, mm -hmm. um, and sending out just a pamphlet or something to them saying, you know, you don't need to water your grass twice a day. Because <laughs> I've seen that happen. So ed education you, on private yeah. wells, but also time time of day. I mean, you're oh. out you're out riding, and if somebody's got their 
sprinklers going at noon. Right. Was, you know, you it's actually you address that. Right. A really, if you had a regulation. Right. There was a really nice educational pamphlet put together by someone, I believe it was up in Sharon, um, who was working as a contractor uh, up in Georgetown. That's beautiful. It addresses all the things that you're talking about. I'd love to see that pamphlet. And I believe he lives within Aquifer, so it might be something that, and he's given it to other towns to replicate. And I met him at a conference on, um, it was groundwater levels, fluctuating groundwater levels, and the impact on wells, the municipal wells and local wells. Mm -hmm. And he said, it, it, just what you're saying, if, if you can get people in the community thinking the same way about water, because it's a shared resource, like what I have to do as a town water supplier, supply everybody who's on the system, but we all drink from the same glass. So right. we should all be thinking the same way as, as far as keeping local water local when we have to, which would mm -hmm. be the bands, you know, using it when we, we can and it is in good supply, and how we treat it, how we treat our lawns, how we treat our roads. It's all one big system, and it's a great way to think, and it's very, it's very simple. So I'd like love to speak. We've got a town. Keep it all. Um, I mean, actually, I agree with you. It is walking a fine line. I just want to bring it up because it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Well, it's, not, it's not the ban. The watering hours should okay. be should be addressed by Board of Health. Yeah. Okay. What is the um, does anybody else agree with us? Public to private. Okay. Oh, oh. oh I got it. <laughs> I got lots of votes, Nadi. How many people are on private wells? We have yeah, like two. Public. We have like two streets. Oh, oh so it's all yeah, it's, it's all. Not, yeah. yeah, no, no, it's mostly mostly public. Yeah, yeah. these are supplemental wells. A lot of people wells. are saying a lot of pay, people are saying I'm just for irrigation. Yeah, these are yeah. supplemental wells. Yeah, yeah, okay. these are wells just so they can water their lawn in the middle of August and everything. I see. Yeah, they can green. So that was. We saw obviously the water and water supply, like I said, reading your report with your new strength, and the fact that this, the flood drought cycle really hasn't affected you as far as fluctuating levels. That's good too. Everything <laughs> continues to keep the water local. That's great. Um, the next one was the agreement with obviously the uh, Manson and Foxville Northern Wastewater Treatment Plant to bring the sewer into here and extend it into parts of east, east, and that's a strength that's going to help you out as far as your Title V issues. You know, yeah. failed septic systems. And especially for commerce in that part of town. That's yeah, it. Needs, it needs it for definitely for commerce. And then the other one you brought up, which I thought was really uh, cool, is clean energy development town wide. And that's a strength because clean energy potentially going to have an effect on greenhouse gases. Um, obviously, pollution, it could be even light pollution. If you're doing lights going to that extent, the whole bit. So, you know, becoming a clean energy town. Is, is really a strength. Is there anything within any of these um, policies, maybe, that you're doing to promote clean energy that you'd like to see? I mean, it's obviously a strength, but it's something you'd like to push. Anyone, or just kind of push it as a suite, as a whole, this is what we do, this is why we do it, this is how we do it. Well, we're designated as a green community. Um, you are, which so is the big thing you already started. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> All right. Did no one brought up anything about um, waste and recycling? Because I understand that that's a big issue these days with the recyclables. China's not taking the recyclables anymore. Is that an issue with the rates going up, or do you have to find I think alternatives? Our rates are going up, and correct me if I'm wrong, in January, yeah, ten dollars a quarter. You know, is that something that you're going to have to find other ways to address going forward? Like, I mean, mo most of our trash goes to CMAS, right? And it down in copper and gets incinerated. Okay. So yes. anything anything you throw in the trash barrel, it, depending on what company you're doing, it mostly goes to sea mass and is incinerated. Um, I, the town program's great, where you can you get a nice giant recyclable barrel that we used to keep in the hallway up here to show people, but it, it disappeared. I don't know if it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think once they figured they got X amount of people in the town on it, they didn't need the barrel there anymore. Yeah. But okay. and people kept using it. <laughs> so you got a good recycling program, and you've yeah. got um, a long-term agreement, obviously, with the CMS state. Yeah. You guys probably got in we early. Use, and yeah, waste management's that town for private vendor. But education for recycling to keep our costs down. Oh, yeah. yeah. Keep, 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 the, keep the plastic bags out of the recycling and put them in the trash where they're supposed to go. Yeah, and even then, yeah. that could be part of your overall you know, green energy strategy, if, too. If, if nobody else has said it for green energy, a specific um, item, if you don't mind, would be um, encourage subdivision regulations to have street lights on renewable energy. Um, we can do we can do a little solar. 
on the on the um, or little little wind mm -hmm. turbines on the on the individual street lights as a way just to reduce our overall electrical uh, <coughs> demand on the grid. Some of these points of educating the public. The reason I looked over my shoulder here is because my sons grew up in Easton and they used to come home from their, they used to look forward to their field trips to NRT and they'd come home and they'd educate me. Yeah, yeah, it's, it was awesome. Do we need uh, uh, for smart grid? Is that an issue here? Smart grid? Um, the electrical grid, mm. the, the overall electrical utility grid tends to be oversized, is that if I understand it correctly? And that putting in Putting in smaller um, units, management units, allows them to see. I'm not familiar with that. Okay. Uh, explore uh, possibilities of efficiencies by using smart grid. Because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded awesome. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you, I got a son doing renewable energies, and I'm trying to understand. Oh, okay. well, <laughs> the, the, it sounds like you're talking about microgrids. Too, yes. Maybe? Yes. Micro yes. Thank you. Yeah. Looking at my, so look at microgrids. Yeah. Um, so a lot, and it, a part of it's substations, but it's mm -hmm. also it's also the computer programming system. So if, if the system is too large, mm -hmm. then they don't see the individual outages as mm -hmm. easily. I think is the issue. And the microgrid concept too is that you you make your grid much smaller with more interconnections between the grids, so that if you have a power outage, it can be more localized than half the town that has sped off the same line all going down. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay. Let's do it. It's too bad I mentioned the person to be able to explain that if they actually are doing that or talking about it. Right, yeah. Well, and he, but, but when we bring this in, um, he can give us some idea. Because you know, we're trying to think long term. If he's not thinking about it, Eastern wants them to. Yeah. All right, the environment. Right off the bat, you say your strengths. So the amount of protected land we have is a strength. And I would imagine you just keep going status quo with your policies, what you do, how you do it, how you try to acquire land. Look at land that you could potentially acquire in terms of your green infrastructure map now. And this is, um, this is evaluate land for uh, flood storage capacity. So all that dark green is land that would be good for us to acquire that we don't have now? Yeah. Okay. Which is kind of the stuff, the stuff along the eastern border, no, that's the western border, um, that, that particular big glob of green, that's Canoe River Aquifer, salt source aquifer. Mm -hmm. It's also priority wildlife habitat, so that, that disturbs me. Yeah. And then down at the bottom, going, going um, east-west along the bottom, right where his hand was, yep. that's Hakamak. Swamp, ACC, yep. priority wildlife area. Yep. So that's kind of that's also it's also a lot of green, a um, lot of dark green in priority wildlife. And one of the good things is because it's regional. These are regional areas too, and because you have a regional sole source aquifer designated, and you have an ACEC. In fact, you have a couple of ACECs in this whole Canoe River area. You can actually go in with your partners to acquire land and get more bang for the buck because it serves a regional purpose. So, say like north of Easton, where I see a big green blob, is I don't know if that's Stone or Town. Yeah. yeah, right up here, you can go in with them and try. Yes, to it's, part, it's part of the Canoe River Aquifer. Yeah, yeah, it's like if you're trying to go into Sharon or something like that. And yeah. same thing with Mansfield, Foxborough, or whatever it is. Yeah. On the left. Oh, here, yeah. No, no, no. Um, Odd left. Hard, hard oh, left. hard left over here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and even maybe Norton's, because they. They're on the, the yeah, yeah, you got Norton, down and then below, yeah. even over here you got you got Taunton. Now the Taunton green infrastructure isn't in here yet, but I mean this obviously doesn't stop here at the line. So, yeah. and we, we're trying to bring Taunton into the fold too that way. And Taunton has three ACECs in the in the city. Wow. So it really it really works out to go in, look at your partnerships, look at what the state has already designated, and see how you can work together with your partners to acquire sensitive areas. <coughs> These um, overlay the green infrastructure with the open space, with the master, with the master plan critical, um, yeah. critical natural resource infrastructure. They're going to match up pretty well, but just yeah. And I'm going to inform the rest of the group at the end of the thing today. We're going to have after all these individual town meetings close. We're going to have a regional meeting with a couple of officials, representatives from Norton, 
Mansfield and Easton together to address those particular issues that came up in the, the individual town issues. And that's going to be appended to your individual town report. So you guys are going to have a, a kind of a Cadillac type of deal, which is great. That's the way it should be. The next one, you said strong local wetland bylaw. You said that was a strength. And Kyla made the comment that it needed to be stronger. Sorry, before we get too far into the next one, so for action I evaluate land for flood storage capacity, the conversation also sounded like maybe consider new purchases. Is that or or, or, or and uh, they're not going to be considering. I'm not going to be the one to say consider new purchases. Um, <laughs> You want to be that consider person? new purchases. <laughs> um, overlay, overlay, critic, overlay, green up infrastructure with, um, with, master plan, critical natural crit infrastructure. critical infrastructure to see if, to see um, if there are prior if there are undeveloped lands in priority areas. Okay, we'll just say if. Well, you got to be open-minded because you never know. You have two privately owned golf courses here. Something could come up with one of those, and then you have to yeah. kind of always be yeah, open-minded. Well, I'm just saying you have to always be open-minded <laughs> as to whether or not the ball. you <laughs> would you want to, you know. Uh, yeah, get it to town meeting. You might have better luck there. <laughs> <laughs> get it to the meeting. Hey, strong uh, local wetland bylaw. Do you want to uh, revisit it, or uh, is it something you're, you're comfortable with right now? Personally, I don't want to open up the by I don't want to open up the bylaw. I don't. All right. I, I think that with. I, I mean, it, but I, there is there is discussion. It's under discussion. I, I Evaluate. Think, yeah, I think from what I hear out, out on the street from builders and stuff that they feel it's too, too restrictive, mm -hmm. which means it's probably just right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You know, but, All right. I, you know, so. Okay, so we'll put evaluate, which is good, which means we're looking at it. Again, we're in discussion phase. That's good. But if it's strong, the first two is strong, that's huge for the town. You know, you've got good land acquisition to buy a lot that, that, that pertains to it. The next one, with, and everybody chimed in, this was forest management, the fire for ATVs. Um, it's town various, obviously, obviously going to run into um, it's town wide's problem, various ownership. It is a strength, to say globally with the town. But it's also a vulnerability, obviously. I mean, we've seen what happens with woodlands. What kind of things can we do with forestry management to really improve the situation? What type of fix might we be looking at there? Implement forest management plans on the books. Do you have forest management plans? We do have a couple for, for, our, for, our, for a couple conservation lands. Uh, consider implementation of recommendations in cooperate with grants, if we could do public-private grants. I know that's the funding yeah. for forest management plans is huge. So cooperation between groups to get larger grants, to get more done. So kind of cooperative grants between all owners and groups, affected parties. Now we don't have service for public forest supplies. We don't have to worry about well, but you have your, you said your watersheds are, a lot of it's protected lands. Forest management wouldn't help in that regard, I don't think. Well, I don't know, like, River Aquifer, it's just, maybe that's, just, yeah, and then we got wheat and flour. Yeah. Well, the having wheat and farm does have a man, forest management plan. Mm. Okay. Grant. We just need to do it. Do you have a lot of them in, in town? I mean, I saw, I saw some of the data. You consider yourself as having a lot of Chapter 61 properties where you have forest, forest management plans on properties where people have enrolled for tax tax relief and they do regular cutting and forest management. I mean, it's a 10 year plan. I don't know how many I've done. I, yes, we, I don't know how our 61 lands compare to other towns. Mm -hmm. um, and I only have seen, I've only seen two forest management plan uh, activities in two okay. years. All right. So I don't know how active they are. Should we encourage? Um, yeah, it's one of those things, obviously, if the people have them, you want to keep them in, in forest management, active forest management. You kind of got to do an assessment, you know, to see, if, number one, if there's an adequacy. You, know, you need the acreage, too, to put in it. But uh, getting back to your comment about cooperating, you know, cooperative work between parties, public, private, 
Um, and even your electric uh, utility, we talked about that before, getting them more in the mix to help address local concerns. I, I think that's a good comprehensive way to approach planning, and it'll really help you out with grants too, because you public-private ownership um, and, and your utility, you know, a lot of times you can leverage monies that are available from the utility as a private source to go after a public grant to maybe come up with a comprehensive forest management plan that will address a lot of your needs. Personally, I'd like to see a better forest management plan for the issue that I was talking about over by the Southeastern Regional where there was just a quarter of a mile of dead trees. Yeah. Regional plan? You're talking the property that's owned by Simpson Spring that abuts 106 looking north? Um, For the landfill, so it's I, it's the property before and after the regional it goes from Canoe River. Isn't that Canoe River that goes under 106, just past yeah. the regional, going I, I know, west, north of the road or south of the road? Uh, it was on both sides. Both sides. Blackbrook. Yes. Thank Blackbrook. You. Yes, that area there from Blackbrook to Malkowski's. Oh, yeah, so that's a good point, and I was thinking about it. Um, if, if you're looking at enforcing your forest management plans, do you want to extend them to other areas that aren't covered, yes. and are they inclusive of some of the climate threats we've talked about? <coughs> yeah, no, good, good, good. Well, good Adams. Because one, one of the people at the meeting, when the first introduction last Friday, brought up forest fires. And I thought to myself, he's thinking of California. And then I thought, well, no, wait a minute, maybe he isn't. No, mm -hmm. say TVs. So I, I think the, I don't, I don't have a good sense of the po the public's interest, whether the, whether whether they whether whether the there's two management strategies on force. One is leave them alone. Yes. And the other is the other is. We haven't left them alone. They are all they are all disruptive forests. You know, we're none of us have old growth forests in our towns anymore, um, and therefore, you know, management is legitimate. Um, and it's, and I don't know which I don't know which management strategy is the preferred way in this town. I think it's site specific. I think it depends what people expect from the view of the accustomed area so if i'll take for example behind near our rock wall at sheep pasture we have giant um, hemlocks they're reaching the end of the natural lifespan if i were to go in and take all of them out at once you can imagine that honestly they probably should all come out but it would be people are not accustomed to that view that's kind of what they expect to see um, but an area like Black Brook, like you're talking about, that's visibly damaged. I think people would support, you know, clearing out, all, doing a more thorough clear out of those, you know, trees and everything because it's a different location. It's a different view that they're expecting. I so I think exactly it's what you're saying, mm -hmm. like the big tree they just took out at the train station. I was like, why'd they cut that down? Yeah. Oh my God, I like that tree. Yeah. Hey, all the big yeah. beautiful trees are probably yeah. dead. Well, well the, the one in Stonehill. Well, that broke in half. Right, it exploded. <laughs> we got calls. The beach tree on Center Street. Oh, that thing was huge. Yeah. Half this table was the, right. the basic one. Wow. So we don't have any specimen tree. Um, we don't have specimen tree protections here. We don't have street tree protections. And these are all trees that would, um, you know, people, people do see certain trees as being ones that like to protect. So, um, so I guess I have a clear street. Uh, 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 establish a clear forest management strategy for different properties. Yeah. It's not just the man. It's not just implement the plan, but but have a strategy. Because what you're talking about is is diversifying age growth. That's classic forest right. management. Yeah. It's not just clearing out. It's not just right. clearing out the dead growth at, for right. wood, you know for woodland fire. But it looks it's, very different to some places. Establishing age diversity. Absolutely. Is, Kind of key. Might even yep. be a neat thing to have someone uh, maybe host a workshop with a mm -hmm. regional forester to come in and talk about how we plan, why we plan, the things we can do locally, maybe the things our rules and regulations should have, who you should be cooperating with if you want to have a comprehensive municipal forestry plan and take it into a regional plan if there's more than one group affected. I mean, 
You could run it as a canoe river group. The regional services group could have someone come in and talk about forestry. That would be great. The RPA, you guys could do something, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe have someone come in, You would get some USDA people in. Um, maybe get utilities to bring their forester and talk about what we do, how we do it, why we do it, and how we have to look at it to come up with a real good comprehensive plan. And maybe even get a private landowner in there <coughs> that somebody works with right now who has a Chapter 61 woodlot and said, this is what you have to do. This is how you file a forestry management plan. You contract with a forester to come in and do an evaluation for you. That way you go from the ground up, the local guy, the town guy, and the regional guy, and the national guy to say, this is what we do, this is what we have to look at. And with what you've identified, the extreme storms, the flood drought cycle, and extreme temperatures, I think that would be a really kind of adequate, nice, nice kind of blanket way to cover it. And yeah. can you capture that? Because that was great. Yeah, I, good luck with Maybe that. not every word, but I got it. <laughs> And I think it could help educate people too, because this would be a new change that they would see, but that there's a plan going forward yeah. and you know projections of what things look like when they go into growth and you know as they're coming out of and what that means. And, and it's nice too if you get like you know talking to you and then thinking about where you are. Right. It's so nice if in a workshop like that you can get local sponsorship, like these guys are sponsoring, the Canoe River is sponsoring, the Regional Service Group is sponsoring, the Town of Easton is sponsoring, USDA, <coughs> National Grid, and you look at it, wow, okay, if everybody's in the basket, then everybody's going to be, maybe we're all thinking alike about this. We, we have to understand this better. We have to go, we have to understand this better. That'd be good. The next one, speaking of agriculture, was agriculture, and we said, we saw agriculture as strength with various people in here, and we say, not just preservation of agricultural land, it's a big thing, big difference. It's active agriculture because what did we say we were doing? We're keeping agricultural soils viable and alive. We're promoting the local agricultural income. We're providing a food source. We're, we're talking about the preservation of food sheds, especially in, in light of these things happening and maybe even exacerbating over the next, which they will, until the end of the century. So what do you think? agricultural land. We said it was a strength. Is there anything else we can do to maybe? I can tell you that we've benefited from our partnership. We partner with Stonehill College. Um, yes. We harvest hay at the Stonehill site because the area was too large for them, but it's allowed us to rest our fields, which gives us the ability to, you know, um, go back and let our fields rest and just recompost into the fields. I don't have to add any kind of chemical inputs and it builds the capacity of those fields because I'm not just drawing, drawing, drawing off of them. Before they would have to put in chemical inputs if they wanted to improve the grass yield. Um, but now we rotate through. So now we were able to partner with Stonehill. So it gives us more flexibility to be able to do that. So other partnerships might benefit other agricultural concerns. So part partnership for, to rotate fields? Either to rotate fields. I know Langwater has a partnership. They use part of the wheat and farm property. Um, I don't know what other agricultural concerns might be looking for. Well, the new, new place like Marshall Farm or Marshall Lane. Yep. I just, I just not know. Mm -hmm. yeah. encourage, encourage local, encourage um, landowners to uh, partner with, young, with farmers that want to get Absolutely. A foot. Agriculture is extremely cost prohibitive, it's mostly because of the land. People can't there. afford to buy it outright. Yeah. So if we can create some partnerships, that's a positive way to get people involved with agriculture. But we want to get our the 61 lands more, more productive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he, it, it, one with, with these local guys that want to farm. Which is great. In a lot of communities, you have older farmers. Most of the farmers down in this area, they are older if you look at the average age. And a lot of them want to get out of the business. A lot of their relatives don't want to continue, you know, sons, daughters, all that they don't want to continue in farming. They realize the value of the estate. That's basically a farmer's retirement account. This is land, his or her land. But if they have the ability to lease it to aspiring young farmers, so like you said, don't have the capital to own their own land, but will lease it. There's a couple of great examples of leases around here. One's in Norton, they lease the uh, Crane Farm out. Um, there's also a group. We lease Wheaton Farm. Yeah, you guys lease Wheaton Farm. But there's also a group um, called Farming Futures. It's a bunch of young farmers that are working together. And one of the things, they actually had a workshop last year. I was part of it, and they brought in people from UMass all over the place to talk about farming in the face of climate change. What can we do to be more efficient, more effective, and more productive 
while still working with climate change and retain the viability of our farmland. So the farming, the farming future, if we could get, if we could get um, that, and that, was that agenda, yeah. And yeah. You guys agree to see. Do you guys work with CMAP at all? I do a little I bit. Know, I know, I know. Yeah. Well, one thing I would say is ex explore diverse farming opportunities. Yes. Everybody thinks of vegetable farming, and you can overdo one crop or one style of farming, but there's apiaries, there's small animal husbandry, there's, you know, you don't necessarily need hundreds of acres to grow goats or chickens or whatever, um, bees, or, you know, there's a lot of different options, berries, um, so look to see what's available in the, the community and then encourage other people to be kind of creative thinkers in what they can do um, in that field, but maybe do it a little differently. So that's a good point too for the forest management plans. You have some farming practices that are best done in forested areas. Absolutely. So. Mushrooms. Do you, um, do you guys think yeah. we should encourage mm -hmm. um, the town farmers market to bring in different types of um, farm product? Do, I'm, just ask, I'm asking as citizens, does the, is Easton having its own farmers market? Is that a positive of the town? Should, should they? I think it needs to get even more um, traffic, and that'll bring yes. more people in, too. So anything we can do to build it up is a good thing. So, so encourage Diver yeah, diversity <laughs> <looking> for a little <laughs> <laughs> Is Easton Ag Commission doing the right thing? <laughs> yeah. I, I think that well, moving it to the, the, the Lutheran Church, there's more access now. Lincoln Street right. than it was at Oak Sands Hall. So, Absolutely. Um, but I think more more in the way of communication with, with the community about the fact that it exists. I know a lot of people don't know that it exists. Right. Um, and, and they know Langwater because it, it's, it's, obvious. It, it's, it's obvious when you drive down 138. Um, right. But it's not so obvious with, with the farmer's market. So um, I hear communicate more. I hear that a lot. And ask people what are the best vehicles for that. Because see, I'm not on social media, so I, I can't speak to the, okay. the social media aspect. Okay, but uh, but it, it, but but do get um, a, do you get the newsletter? There's a newsletter email blurb on occasion. No, I don't. I don't see that. Okay. I, my neighbor is, is, is a member of the okay. Action Commission, so okay. I, I have some communication with them. Okay. So I personally, personally think that the Eastern Ag Commission's um, farmers market is is pretty special mm -hmm. because. It doesn't have a lot of crafters. It has a lot of farm <coughs> products. <coughs> you know, it's encouraged the farm product, the local, the, the local based, um, uh, locally grown, locally grown, locally grown, locally locally established. So, so, craft is great. Craft is great. I think is it true that Simpson Springs does a good job with crafters? They do. So, but we want to we want to encourage we want to encourage bringing all this. This good yeah. harvest into the farmers market and get giving them a place for those farmers to to buy yeah. and and media. That's good to hear too. Are there yeah. physical signs in town? Like we um, that we need we need more signage. <coughs> more signage. Is the Simpson Spring is that um? Yeah, no. Is that is that? Do they bring in vegetables and stuff that I've never been on there? Um, yeah, mostly crafting. Mostly, yeah. I know they'll have like an alpaca farm that goes down there. They have a honey producer, I think, that goes down. Yeah, but it's not as vegetable related as I think the Eastern <coughs> right. regular farmers well, market is. I've been down there, you know, buying waters and stuff yep. like that, and seeing the they have the meats and all that. But yep. I didn't know. If, I've, I've never gone down there on a Saturday and yep. seen that they actually have. Vegetables. And, yeah, I haven't been on a Saturday either, so right, I just, just yeah, they're exactly. They're very limited on what they can do food wise because the whole facility, yep. it's a public water supply and they're on a tight tank. So you can't have any okay. food prep yep. whatsoever. So it has to be, you know, table to, to market type yep. food like they could sell an onion, but they can't cut it in half. Right. Everything so brought in as is. And and sold as is. Yep. We don't want them. Really? Because there's a lot of, they advertise a lot of chefs on Saturdays. They're not supposed to. Well, they advertise a lot of chefs. <laughs> Oops. 
and that's okay that's if, an edit. Yeah. if they're a ca if they're a caterer and everything they bring in they bring out but they can't wash a dish yeah. or anything right, there right. so yeah. it does try to which is probably what happens then they bring in samples and cater yeah. they have to carry and carry out right. yeah. I think it's a challenge to all farmers markets to just not even in Easton all over to drive enough interest uh, diversity without turning into a craft fair um, because people are looking for diversity sometimes um, but that would be good if you had diverse operations in town of different agricultural products. So the next one we have town with two farmers markets. That's right. Next one we had was um, vector borne diseases, and this is going to be a horror show for Board of Health. Yeah, just, with just, just like the Taunton Watershed thing, it doesn't stop at the town line. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. And it doesn't stop in the Northeast. You saw the maps that we had in the first series. The projections for the next 30 years. I mean, from going to be a spotted red and white area in the Northeast, it went solid red. And you're even seeing um, the introduction now of ticks uh, that aren't native to this area. Right. I saw four deer last night alone <laughs> in my yard. No, oh, what four in my front yard too? They don't even move anymore. I was going to hang out. I let my dog out to chase them around. And yeah, they stand there all day. Um, We're a little more active now since it's hunting season. Yeah, I, I they all come to shoot pasture. <laughs> education, um, it has to just keep going in the uh, the uptick. I mean, we already. Is that a pun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unintentional. Um, yeah, we we have a, a tick and mosquito kit that we actually got from uh, DPH, and we teach the entire fourth grade. Yeah. Oh. We as a team. Um, teams can have fourth grade tick and mosquito protection every year. Uh, we also brought it to the Council on Aging at, at times for different health fairs and set it up. So try, try to keep the education going, but you know, reaching out there and getting to more groups, I think, is the, is the key. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so I, put, I put education and awareness because yeah. a lot of times you, have, you really have to make people aware of the fact that. Uh, you know, there are certain areas that are going to be more tick prone. Stay mm -hmm. away from this, stay away from that. The education, what to do, when to do, where to do, how to what do. What to wear. What to wear, yeah. which is really, yeah. You see people walking in with shorts and everything, and you know. Yeah. And then you, you know the person who knows better because they're wearing jeans with socks over them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I used to call with soil scientists when I first said Pete Fletcher. If, if he no, knows I know the great Pete Fletcher. The great Pete great Fletcher. Pete Fletcher. Great, great, great Pete Fletcher. Fletcher. When we used to go out and vote, uh, in the field, no matter if it was 90 degrees or what, he said, you always wear a shirt like this, you button the stop button, you wear gloves, you tape your cuffs, you pull your socks up, you tape, tape the top of your socks, yeah. you wear a hat. And you wear something protective around your neck if you have to, it doesn't come up high enough. And you'd be going out there, you'd be dying, but at the end of the day, you'd say, you know, you'd go back in, nothing got in me. If something got on you, you'd always wear like white, white tube socks too. Yeah. Pick, 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 take them off, and, and that was it. But he said a lot of people don't realize, he goes, if you're in a profession, we're gonna be outside all day like this, he goes, you can pick things up so easily. Uh, I've talked to any land surveyor. How many times have you had Lyme disease? It's not if. How many times? Yeah. <laughs> right. but, um, do you have good access to the education materials that, that Board of Health has? Yep, and we also have links um, to the resources through the Department of Health um, for the ticks and the mosquitoes to try and educate people. We actually get calls um, throughout the year saying, do you have ticks and mosquitoes there? Yes, I mean, of course, you know. And there, yeah, no, we took them all out. Um, but so we have a link on the website. We do a lot of work with our camp and our school programs that are outside. Um, the teachers are aware too. But people need to understand it's not just kids, it's their pets and it's adults. We had a lot of adults that are worried about their kids and then don't check themselves. So that, it's again, it's that education piece. You gotta keep informing people. That's a great one too, you said web links. Put everything up on the web that you can about that because it's one place everybody will go. They don't want to listen to you in a public service announcement. They'll go to the web and do the Eastern one page. And make something. it less than one page. Yes, so much. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Short, yeah. sweet little pictures. <laughs> yeah, colorful. Kiosks at the conservation areas, maybe with like a little informational. Yeah. We do have kiosks. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to add yeah. there. Yeah, we'll put it up on our bulletin boards too in the yeah. spring, especially. Do you guys still do cross country meets over there? Um, few. Okay. Brockton Cross they Country runs with us. Um, we order 500 tick cards a year and we give them all. 
The one shows the different species of tick in the yeah, area. The little ones, the cards. Mm -hmm. It's as big. We give those out. We don't have an actual pamphlet we give out. So. But I can put that inside the kiosk. Yeah. Oh yeah. Then, okay. Have you seen some of those kiosks? have um, repellent dispensers for people that are like hand sanitizer dispensers and you just rub the repellent oh, wow. on you. Wow. Hmm. Sounds like a maintenance plant nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. We, uh, somebody would throw the board of health back. It's a good one though, but it sounds well, expensive. three or four years ago we were talking but about trying to get tick. The, it, it was an interesting really thing good. and they've done it in other parts That's of the country. Place. It's down in Connecticut. It's literally a feed station for yeah. deer, and you put it out in the winter time, and the deer have to rub up against this thing that actually puts uh, a, a tick kill on their neck. Yeah. And, and it's, I'm like, oh, who's going to maintain these things? And we looked into buying them and, yeah. and trying to put them like along the, the ends of the railroad. They like to run the railroad bit. That's like one of their main traffic points. Yeah, oh, that and yeah. The, the power lines. You know, so it's nice traffic. Well, how long does it take? To, how long does one of those bars it, last? It, it's it's just like um, it's it's the way it was described to me. It's like a giant flea and tick collar. Yeah. And when they rub against it, it rubs on them. And deer yeah. deer ticks usually yeah. they, they usually get around their neck. That's where they get, and it helps treat the tick population. I'm like, so that's what they did in the end. It was like really cool, but it point. was how much do you have to go through? Yeah, how much? Yeah, <laughs> would you? Right. Right. Well, it would work great in the winter. And I thought feeding. Uh, I thought I thought creating that was the feed other stations is a real problem. Yeah, that was the other thing. We got yeah, enough deer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Feed you through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, are do allow hunting? Yes. And all conservation is. Next one is better environmental education, which kind of Which actually is a positive thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a positive thing for the, the effect of borne diseases. Yeah. So we should probably acknowledge that. I think the education can be cooperative. Like we've all talked about a lot of these other things, being able to get together. If Mark has a particular concern in a, at a certain time of the year, how can we get the message out? Or, you know, if it's a water ban, how can we help get the message out? Privately, so just you're running getting programs year round. right. We run programs year round. We have access to more or less people, families, but we also cooperate with the schools and do calendars four times a year. So is is there a blurb that we can put in? You know, yeah, don't forget, works. don't water in the middle of the day. You know, some kind of a small education piece. So some so so coordinate our newsletters. Absolutely. Yeah, more co so more cooperative action and use of cooperative resources. Mm -hmm. That would be that would. Um, if you could send me your deadlines for new, because the mm -hmm. farmers market is always looking for new ways, and you yep. probably have a great distribution list. Yep, we have that. We have do electronic, have and we have. You, do they give your distribution? You must get small, the newsletters. Small fish. Small fish. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Oh, it, I don't know what we got. It depends electronically. We do a lot more. Our list is much bigger, obviously, electronically that we do. And then we have our school-based outreach um, that goes through, I think, grades pre-K through five. Is it five. fair to say coordinate our newsletter, uh, our newsletter uh, information so that, so that we take advantage of everybody's, yep. as, long as, as long as it's not solicitation? Right. See, ours is a little different. Some of it is programming information that we have. But if there's a really um, important topic that we need to bring up seasonally or whatever, that, you know, farmer's market's going to start up or not, we could add that, or the water ban or whatever it is. So even if it's just a list of hot topics at the moment, we can let everybody know when those go out. And we can incorporate <coughs> links into our e-newsletter if it's important. So we can do the print four times a year and then... We also have the electronic one that goes out more regularly. I didn't get all the details, but I had the idea of a combined educational newsletter blurb on drought, right. farmers markets, yeah. pests. And I think right now there's a lot of alliance. NRT distribution. People hear the same message. Uh, yeah. NRT important. distribution list, water departments distribution list, farmers market distribution list. The only thing I'd have is distribution list for other camps. Yeah. Camps is good. Yep. Yeah. We have Getting a camp information list. Out to camps is good. Yeah. And what, that's usually I hit up. I literally have on my email. I just click camps, and it 
I can send email to all, all the camps that are registered that year. I mean, I think one thing is we, we rely a lot on uh, public lists that go, uh, private lists. Um, everybody knows um, Lee Williams' list that goes out <coughs> and everything. As well. Exactly. But if they stop doing it, they don't do it. If we have this kind of other channel going on at the same time, it'd be a good backup to, to what's going on Someone already. Always, someone's always picking it up, and you always right. have live links to other people, yeah. too. Exactly. So as long as we're not soliciting, we can use each other's lists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, don't use it for solicitation. Just use it for education. Yeah. And can we get everybody's emails that have been involved in these meetings? That might yes. help if somebody has a question later, yeah. just to kind of share that. Yeah. If you don't, if, do people have to say it's OK? But in terms of, sure, no, we're, we're, public. we're public, yeah. yeah. Once they, once we're they, private, once they but their it's email, fine. Right. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's, that's right. right. That's right. All right, the next one, um, and they kind of go hand in hand here. We have uh, stormwater management, and we have groundwater, ground and surface water. The stormwater management, we said, is a strength and a vulnerability. And we kind of discussed what we could do with stormwater before. So um, encourage, uh, as C Seek funding for MS4 implementation. Yeah. Give the DPW a little plug here. Yeah. And I think we do encourage LID already in, in, new, in new development and in conservation, um, yeah. con conservation permits and and planning department, plan, in all planning department permits, you know. We, we already do, but we should just continue to. Yep. LID is, that's the low impact development, it's get the ground, get the stormwater into the ground where, at the source as fast as possible with some uh, water treatment beforehand to get rid of the, get rid of the sand salts. Like storm scepter. Yeah. 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 And with the new MS4 permit, redevelopment's gonna maybe be a little more relevant for that. Do you wanna? Do you have any? So we do have we uh, conservation and, and site plan review does pick up redevelopment and stormwater is an issue there. Mm -hmm. But um, but seeking funds for redevelop for for upgrade of town property mm -hmm. is um, stormwater on town property would be key. The MS4 has to, your town, your town uh, stormwater permit requires that you identify this new, new stormwater improvements every year. Um, it's a year. Uh, so we're looking at um, seek funding for the MS4 implementation, keep encouraging LID, and where possible, look at possibilities for redevelopment and retrofit. Yeah. Okay, next one, and we link them, we decided to go 8A and 8B. Groundwater fluctuation, which is going to be a problem town-wide when we have, obviously, rain like we do now. And then surface water elevation and fluctuation town-wide. We're still going to be vulnerable there. So groundwater fluctuation strength, strength and vulnerability because for deep water in the ground, it's going to help recharge our wells, the whole bit. Um, surface water fluctuation, it's going to send some, obviously, mixed challenges and mixed years. Like some of those waters that you can pond behind some of these dams that we talked about before. Now maybe uh, three years out of five, you're not going to have a problem. Maybe uh, with the increased groundwater levels, uh, you know, you're going to have problems. If it's already at or near the road before you have a big storm, chances are really good you're going to have a problem when you do have a big storm. Sometimes not even a big storm. So is it communication to, um, to um, check the pond, pond levels for for yeah, that's something uh, we, dam management during storm events, we prior that, to storm events. Yeah, we put that in under the infrastructure to really um, continue to observe and maintain our stormwater infrastructure. You know, and obviously uh, surface water, you know, I, surface water elevation, that would be the same thing. You know, you'd be working with dam owners. Obviously, your public dams, you guys have the ability to go in and maintain, you know, raise or lower the whole bit as needed. Um, you'd probably have to get, especially in those neighborhoods that we've identified, identified as flood prone, where you have private landowners, you're going to have to work with them. It's going to be kind of a system, say, hey, our dam is upstream from you, we do this, this, and this, there's going to be water coming down here, it's incumbent upon you to do this, to keep things flowing in the stream, natural rate, 
So what can we really do about about groundwater? I mean, it's kind of like. How about giving your, um, I would think maybe do an overall system checkup. Look at look at your integrated system of um, stormwater discharge points and where your dams and your vulnerable points you identified are, your culverts, your dams, your other things. We already got that. Yeah, we yeah, already got that. We already got that. So we'll say refer back to the environment. Right. right. And also, you did, you, I think, talked about the septic reg changes that kind of relate to the groundwater fluctuations, yeah. too. The infrastructure. Yeah, the infrastructure. Yeah. Also, what's your, do you think, is there, do you think it happens that people test for septic allowance in a drought and then they build one that Doesn't matter is too close? Because say it's August, lowest groundwater time of the year. Mm -hmm. In March, the water keeps coming up to this level, say here. Uh -huh. What happens is it pulls all the minerals out and leaves a stain line like in a bathtub. Oh, so, so, in, so in August, when the water table's down here, it's called modeling. Modeling the modeling yeah. soil. Yeah. So. Yep. And that's why you're all so our health certain. agents are smarter than that. So it's yeah. great. <laughs> that's that's great. Great. Wow. I didn't know that. So that's that's, that's how that's we determine the water table. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or it's called redox metamorphic features. That's right. That's <laughs> how you get certified. You have to go through that and make that. Uh, I had to drive all over God's creation of the state <laughs> to look at different soils because different soils happen in different areas. They had to go look at marine clays. Mm -hmm. They had to go up to like Salem, that's right. Topsfield, and then they, you take a test in a hole. It bridge, down in Bridgewater, and you actually literally mark the different soils and write down on soil law. I took the Fletcher's test. Did you're a soil, <laughs> licensed soil evaluator? A long time ago, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've done a lot of things in my day. Which, you know, the funny thing is, because he didn't hold a position in the health department, and for whatever reason, is he couldn't become a, a soil evaluator in, because he was a soil scientist and could teach the class. And I'm like, he couldn't get the, the license that he was teaching. It's like a conflict or something? Oh, it, it was because... It was <laughs> because he didn't have a lot of practical knowledge. Oh, that's yeah. hysterical. He's like the guy. Yeah, he's like the dirt guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I call him dean, the dean of dirt. Yeah. I, used to teach I used to go like this when I walked in, I'm the dean of dirt. So My <laughs> favorite line is, take your head out of the hole. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Take your head out of the hole and look around. Is there water, <laughs> standing water? Then that could be your water table. You know? yeah. That's so funny. All right, so the next one we'll say, and this is kind of, we put in parentheses the first, revisit what we consider invasives, and then talk about transitioning vegetation in the environment. Like, what are we seeing that's different already that we didn't see maybe 10 years ago, 20 years ago? And what's invasive, what's invasive as opposed to what's just transitioning, what's moving up? Kind of like the ticks and the skeeters, they're moving up. What's moving up with them? What types of vegetation are we seeing? What what old vegetation is disappearing? What sources? What sources do we have for this information? Check 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 those good sources on a regular basis and update update the plant lists at in the yep. local regs. Yep. And that ties who, back into who are those forest sources? management. Yes. 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 Did anyone see yes. a story yes. in the, on their phone this morning about a woman in like Seattle who got had a parasite? It was like or an amoeba that. That we had usually found in Central America, but somehow ended up in tap water. She was doing one of those, using one of those nasal. Oh, so I'm just horrible. saying. I know. It, I know. It sounds like one of those nasal. What do they call it? Neti, a neti pot. pot. Neti pot. Yeah. But anyway, it was just interesting because they were saying because the temperatures are getting warmer, that you could find different things in like water that you didn't. It's very concerning that there was a yes. public water supply that there was. It is. Was it a public? Or I, it I don't honestly know. She was in Seattle. She was in Seattle. Does your system filter out? Well, we, um, drugs? <coughs> we, no, it doesn't filter. It's not like a big Brita, but you know, we, we chlorinate. <laughs> chlorinate. We chlorinate and have uh, UV as a secondary. Oh, okay. interesting. Oh. Yeah, just interesting things that you don't even think that you know, people, even and if they're well, sometimes have all wells. Southern right. bugs as well as, yeah. as, well yeah. as our current bugs. Okay. Like down the lake, the lake village, all wells. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm on a well. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so tell me how to do that thing. <laughs> so, well, seek, seek the right sources. Manomet's a good source. Man, Manomet's a yeah. wonderful source. Okay. okay, good. In fact, Jen Husha, who's been doing these maps for us, yeah. She's a forester. She's. Uh, it would be great just to know. It would just well. great. It'd be great to know which links to double yeah. check on a regular basis and insert in. 
Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a really much, I need some cookbook stuff. Yeah, and the state's looking at forestry stuff too. The state forest looks at stuff, stays in touch with all the local foresters. So. But Jane McManaman's a great, great resource, and she can hook you into people who are actually looking at this right now and doing this. What, what, is, what is one of the new invasives that's come up here? I'm not familiar myself with well, this. We have blue stripes. Well, we got the population is, is, is uh, vulnerable right now because the waters are warmer. Yeah. yeah. That's why the prices of lobsters are going I can tell you the poison I can get to the sea. Yeah. 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 And different yeah. tree species. So oh, like somebody brought no up. Enables, uh, bats. Bats. Yeah. yeah, tree species are disappearing and, and other ones that aren't really. Hemlocks. The reason right. they're so stressed is yeah. because. Who said hemlocks? The reason they're so stressed is because the it's their southern end, southern mm -hmm. tree. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they're getting more and more pests and diseases every time because, we look at because, them. Because they're stressed. Right. It's opportunistic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The septal, the new disease. Oh, UMass must have a good Oh, UMass, yeah. Really yeah. Great. UMass. I just need to know the websites to click on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something we should put in with that, Andrew, if you're going to make a list, is how to remove best removal strategies for the ones mm -hmm. we want to try and remove. Oh, God. It's, good luck. It's going to be an ongoing process, but at least people will have even an idea the, to try. Even the wetland scientists who come in on permitting yeah. um, aren't giving us specific methods. Okay. They're saying, they're saying, talk to the operator. So there right. is no tried and true. There's no right. single, there's no single, if this is going to work. Magic no and, you're not, and, you're not, and we are, we, the Conservation Commission, are not going to say herbicides. Well, that's what I worry it's about. Gotta be, it's got to be something. Right. If yeah. we tell people, so like, these are invasive, they just go default. spray it, and yeah, we're not, we're not gonna that's a that problem. Right. So we, so I, it, I'm not getting any. I'm not getting any single answers yeah. on that. Right. I worry that they go to you know Home Depot or whatever and they find the most yeah. potent thing they can. Yeah. So giving them giving them other resources, more, I guess. We need more invasive species uh, education. We well, we had do. loose strife. I just went to a really good one from, from you know, the urban loose strife. Yep. yep. And that and something came up within our environment here that killed it off. So we. It was only a temporary problem, as I recall. I remember reading about it's it. Back. And it's back. Yeah. Is it back? Yeah. And what about and the not, um, giant hogweed? Uh, uh, is, is that working its way here? It's, it's in Stoughton. Um, I, I have not seen it on our yeah, property yet, but yeah, it's oh, in Stoughton. I think it's oh, yeah, there's an the street. Street. Yeah, okay. a street. Yeah. Volunteer so effort. It is. It yes. makes you photo sensitive. On the loose strike. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And that's okay. So you're saying something to It gets. Yeah, giant. it's from the south and it comes it's up. Yeah, the well, hard weed infestation. Way to wrap it up with what you, with what you guys yep. are saying, and Bill said, we need more education and probably on the succession process. Okay. How is this happening? You know, you, you can't keep killing them and pulling them if it's like this is what's going to settle right. here because the climate's changing. And in general, on movement, which would cover your, your aquatic species, your insect species, things like that, how are things moving with transition? Cold water fisheries, um, are they more vulnerable? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we do have some cold water fisheries, so we should we should identify our cold water fisheries and... Are you certified, though? Because I went on the map, it didn't look like you had anything with a SARS number or a certified cold water fishery. I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, I don't know anything about this, so how to get it certified. The state, it's um, fishing game, they come out, Steve Hurley. Yeah. He'll come out, and if you have suspected cold water streams, you can notify them. They certify it and as of 2014 state certified cold water streams are treated the same way as outstanding resource waters of the commonwealth so we need to get yeah, the certification they, they are subject to the same rules and regulations so uh that the, like I said, protected as outstanding resource so dep recognizes them for protection now so you look for none in eastern no there's none listed right now but if you have them i suspected some because of all of the water in the yeah. The vegetation. Yeah. And you know, which is another thing too. So let's evaluate. Let how, let's what do that. Priority <laughs> high. Okay. Yeah, I got interns, so I couldn't get them out there. Because this is a good protection method. And I, that would be that'll give us our riparian shading and stuff like that. Okay. Really making it. Do yeah. that, Sarah. Do that. Tell us what to do. Okay, we cold water streams. What did you find in Wheaton Farm? Did we have any? You did a, you did a, a quick evaluation. Is that program something that we should bring into our permitting review? 
Oh, that, so that's really a model. Yeah, so we looked at... This is the Nature Conservancy speaking. Oh, yes. We looked at historic mapped areas that were historic wetlands and a couple of other indicators to see if they'd be good potential projects for restoration. All the sites we visited in Easton seem like they were, um, that they would be pretty easy to, to restore back to. So let's do that. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's get that, let's get that. Uh, Can we get the wheat farm uh, back? Yeah, so, yeah, because she nice. was at Wheaton Farm. There was, there was a pond there? What, yeah, there's a pond. What, what are you speaking of? Well, there's not much of a pond there anymore. No, there's that nice. little, there's a the little stream that yeah. almost just looks like a pond. Yeah. So what do we want to put that under? It's actually improving. It's actually uh, amount of protected land is a positive thing, but this is this is enhancing our habitats. Use the TNC information <coughs> to enhance the habitats on um, town owned lands. That's what I think it is. Right? Land line? Yeah. Yeah. You might like this. Absolutely, I was already TNC. thinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, yeah. this is this is NRT. She's mm -hmm. got good lands too. Okay. It's another public-private partnership that we could go, you know, work together on, along the whole stretch of the riverfront. Yeah, because you were just using our sites as field, as mm -hmm. field uh, reality checks, right. field checks. Yeah, but, but we did do the desktop work for uh, the whole Mill River watershed. Mill River, Mill yeah. River. Yeah, that's that's great. That's. That is Canoe River. The Mill River is in the Canoe River aquifer, so by enhancing the Wasby wetlands there, we get more storage, we get more water quality, and we're protecting our multi-town water resource. This would be great. I don't know what the hell you did, but it's one, but we should learn more about that. <laughs> Maybe yeah, we could present. Maybe you could present. On it. That would be cool. Maybe, maybe, maybe see a uh, uh, canoe river at the first Yeah, yeah. They, could they should do it on the Easton day, so I can come down. That would be, yeah, actually, that would be a great place. To TNRC be should, yeah. yeah. <coughs> do you go to those craft meetings? I've, I went to one three months ago, the last one they had. So. Okay. We can host it at NRT next time. All right, the next one was, um, and uh, Kyla had brought up. The potential change in classification of surface waters <coughs> and wetlands under federal protection and lakes. And I don't see it as an issue because because this town protects intermittent streams. It's already ready. They're already regulated resources. Okay, so we just say follow it, be aware of it, and see if it does have any impact on us. And uh, see if see if the wetland protect it. See if the bylaw bylaw doesn't already if, right, if the bylaw needs any modification to address it. I'll put follow this as I think, it develops. I think the federal, what is the point? It, locally we've got it, but we lose Army Corps as an added yeah. permitting authority. So depending on how you feel about added permitting authorities. Um, we're from the government, we're here to help you. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a good thing, or it could be a bad thing. <laughs> it's a quote. Cool, it's a mantra. It's a way of looking for it. All right, the next one was uh, water quality and sources of concern, but we already put that as number 19 on the previous page, so I'll say refer to infrastructure. Because you guys, we found this on one point of vulnerability potentially, so we're going to transfer, we're going to change this to a strength. Yeah, that would. And. That's it. You just changed it from a vulnerability to a strength. Just that easy. Yeah. <laughs> And then Not maybe bad for a small fish. <laughs> <laughs> Under this one, we can also say see the stormwater management elements. Could that that would come What was that, sir? Oh, just the we have the stormwater management action somewhere else. So I'll yep. just say look back up to that. Yeah, that's what I said. Stormwater to refer to. Okay. And, and, Right. And the last one was... And we could evaluate our zoning for... Oh, yeah. And we which, already done which is actually the next one. It yeah. says... Development, <coughs> and we said that's a vulnerability. So you wanted to evaluate your zoning for for um, some for the water uh, aquifer protection districts. Make sure we're doing all that we can. But I'm pretty sure we're gonna be okay. But what about um, the low in, low income housing problem? Are there areas that could be rezoned to be more dense or anything like that? To we, they are actually do have. A um, new compact neighborhood zoning for five, the five corners area. Yeah, the old, the old boundary site. We just did. We just did compact neighborhood in 
to increase, increase to, to minimize the lot size to get in more um, smaller home sizes because of first time home buyers and and um, empty nesters. So Pine Street, is Pine Street really like that too? That's cottages. Yeah. cottages. So it is small. Yeah. Okay, so you want to um, on the deal though on the buyer, you want to evaluate the zoning for protection see if you're at or... um, and whatever what else should we what are the key ones? We did our our, our stormwater protection is pretty good, but we should just make sure um, uh, we talked about we should just check check it against the model. Isn't there a model at in M at M V P P? Yep. Check it against check check our evaluate ours against the Eastern against the MVPP model. Okay. Is there something you guys can do for us? Like the very hills. Uh, so mass Audubon can be higher. Okay, so, that's a, so this is an add-on. It could be, it, that action has been funded by MVP as an action grant. Yes, so that's yes. potential for sure. Oh yeah, you could, you could do that as I'm not seeing, grant. I'm not seeing the uh, vulnerabilities in our, in our uh, zoning, but it'd be nice to just you know double check. In fact, if you have money left over from this process, which right. really, well, you can start applying that and then right. apply for Yeah, that's true. Without yeah. even a grant. Exactly. Without yeah. even a grant, all you have to do is write a plan of work, say, we want that sort of money to come in and do the evaluation. Or any of these, actually, any of them. All right, let me do it here. Now we get the social vulnerability. And the first one, right off the bat, we said uh, 305 Turnpike, mobile home, private. Yep, it's private ownership. Right. The vulnerability here is it's, 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 a, it's a good pocket of affordable housing, which, which we need. Which is a strength, which is what you need. That's why we said it was vulnerable, but it was a strength, too. What the vulnerabilities? The the infrastructure kind of, weakness of the park. Infrastructure, we talked about that before, and the infrastructure, we prefer the infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to, or is there anything more to articulate there in terms of? Or is it strictly infrastructure? Well, there's, and there's, management. there's, there's, there's the management issue, the huge issue is in court right now. So uh, I don't know what the end result's going to be. Um, We're hoping, we don't know what the judge is going to rule. Yeah. We don't. So, so it's strengthened, well, strengthened management, better, stronger management oversight? Better management? Better management, absolutely. It absolutely, absolutely needs management. That's why the, the alternative. It's not better, it, it needs it. It needs, yeah. thank you. Yes. Yeah. And the alternative that needs, we're working needs on. Needs proper management? Yeah. yeah. That way we're not. There you go. Yes. 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 Yeah. Just politically correct. <laughs> and that affects everything, not just the infrastructure, but that, that's the whole the social. Thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, is it that simple? A statement? Is, yeah, I think it is fine. Yeah. And we talked about the uh, the Arrow Elementary School and the use of sheltering. Where I get the fire chief's comments. We said it was a strength, but he said it's also a potential vulnerability for what they don't have. Right. So. So seek seek uh, uh, funds to enhance. Yep. So when we do have, when we know something real, these are slow hanging fruit. Yep. When, when the fire chief says this is exactly what you need mm -hmm. to do, then it's really easy to write the grant. And yeah, it's very specific. But yeah. It's very specific yeah. and it's very clear. Um, and then it means you, know, you can do it in the first year. And that's good because that's a first re response to so uh, put CFC comments on that. Because that's how we agreed with the fire chief. And that way you know just what you can do. And that again, that's an action grant right away. That would be an action grant. We need this to enhance this to make this shelter, you know, good, acceptable, adequate. Should that information also be shared with the committee that's looking at the potential rebuild or remodel of the Center Street School so that they can think about well, the things as it comes up? Too. That was his comment about while we're doing the Center Street School, look at these make things. Sure. Make sure it doesn't end up like this, because now this is like a retrofit. To make it adequate, if you're building a new school or refurbishing it, now's the time. It's, it's center it. school. It's not center street school. Okay, center. center. Yeah. And because it's in the center of it. Yeah. Is there a planning committee for that, or to share with the school? It's the elementary school um, replacement. Um, I can't remember the exact title of it. Um, 
Is it through Board of Selectmen or is it school committee? School, well, it's a combination of, okay. of community groups and the town. <coughs> and what's what's the thing is really uh, going on right now? Kitchen at the high school. The school, go, school building and site committee or something? Yeah, yeah. but it's yeah. Yeah. the school. Yeah. Oh, the, I saw the fire chief's things that said that. Uh, okay, the next, the next one had the fancy name. I like to talk about. In Frothingham Hall, Health and Recreation, and a cooling center. This was a cooling shower. Right. And it's the Council on Aging yeah. Building. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Is it a cooling center? Is that is it a cooling center? Well, at Frothingham Hall, yes. that's what we used yeah. last year was the, yeah. the Frothingham Hall. Did they have center. adequate air conditioning? They had adequate air conditioning, but you right. couldn't stay over. It was just during the day. It was, it was a daytime. Yeah. So but it wasn't really a shelter. So I guess the vulnerability part of it, if you're looking for it, is a... Well, we listed it as a strength, so right. I just wonder if you want to use those vulnerabilities, yeah. just say maybe daytime only. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And just make that note. It's yeah. strong, but it's daytime only, yeah. which would, again, enhance any um, asks you had to do the RO school and the central school as shelters. Right. Like during the day, you can bring people here, but you really need long term. So this would be a short term. <coughs> yeah. Plus, Mark, when they had that as a cooling, was it weekends too? Or was it just weekdays? I think it was just weekdays. So, yes, so it's definitely. Because it just never happened. Daytime. It, it was hot on business hours. Days. It wasn't business hours. Oh. Because okay. it was open until 8 at night. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's the cert team that there was. Daytime, five days. Staffing it, right? Right. So it could be weekends. It could be yeah, weekends yeah, with the cert team yeah. and yeah. the MRC. Okay. So, oh. so, so I put for now, just, it's a short term daytime weekday opportunity, basically. That's what you look at it as. Okay. But cert, but cert team expand. With yeah, make a little cert. low with with cert team expansion for weekends. If you can fit it. Yeah. There's so many action items here. I don't know how we're gonna come up with four priority items. I've <coughs> <laughs> already forgotten what, we, what the first step was. That's why we do this most of the prioritization at the end. So we'll go through it rapid fire. Okay. Yeah. High, medium, low. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you remember, everything in here is memorialized anyway. So if you do come up with three or four that you really like, it's not the exclusion of everything because it's going to be in the appendices of your plan. So you can pick up a little hanging fruit. That's okay. The okay, next one was Park and Terrace. And that's public. That's the Eastern Housing Authority. In fact, the next two. Um, Police circle, Police circle and, and public and Parker Terrace, they're both. Uh, it's just think? that there were vulnerable populations there, right? So that's yeah. why we were identified them. Right. Well, they, they the, the buildings are getting old, too, but mm -hmm. that's you know that's something for us to try to work with DHCD and HUD, to try to get funding. And then right now it's like pulling teeth. Well, they do a lot of work down there. Though. They've done they've done the sewer the, roofs, the, the yeah. roofs, the oh, siding. Was, yes. <coughs> they just paved all the. One full side of uh, Parker Terrace. Park, yes. So you say vulnerable well, populations can continue the upgrade, maintenance, and ma maintain and uh, preserve affordability. Improvements, thank you. And preserve yeah, yeah. affordability. I don't know if, if they're okay. into. Well, right now the affordability is at the lowest it could possibly be to the point where it's affecting the finances. <coughs> in fact, its housing authority means it's a permanent. Um, yeah, affordable. Okay, so what we should do is continue, continue to, to address the capital improvements. And yes. Um, and then the other strength we mentioned was the Gatorade and Rides to the Cooling Center outreach that you were <coughs> talking about. So just keep up the good work on that. Yes. yes. The strength. Yes. So board, board health outreach and services. Yeah. And health, right? Board of health and search. Is it? Is it? Huh? <laughs> never be never. Do. People are happy to see you. It's not like when you go into a restaurant and everyone scatters like cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to see you. They don't want you there. Yeah, yeah. Really, it's funny, funny for those who are scared. So what we're going right. to yeah. 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 We're gonna do last week, we were just thinking of the vulnerabilities, but thinking it about it today, the fact that you have had capital improvements, you want to keep doing the capital improvements, that's a strength. You, you're making the facility better. And the fact that you have the Board of Health and the CERT team outreach and services, that's a strength yes. to a vulnerable population. So. It's going to be vulnerable because it's getting old, and it's going to require TLC. 
but there are things that you do, and you've addressed it in your capital improvement plan, and you do have special services that go out to vulnerable populations. So that's, give you feathers where they do. Mm. Right, the next one was uh, the Main Street Nursing Home. That's private. And so it's vulnerable there. What's, what's the big thing with that? Was that what a generator? Was yeah, they, I don't believe they have a backup generator. They, so we need a backup generator. All right. And that, and I would write in that that we could confirm they don't have a backup generator. What's, so that, what's the number? So that puts, I think there's a one so that puts a stress on place. That puts is a stress on health and services. That is sure. that the capacity? Yeah. Yeah. Power outages and things yeah. like that. Yeah, so that, yes. that'll put a stress on local services because mm -hmm. they can't really maintain themselves. That's something I like to ask the fire chief. He'd, put, he'd know better, but I don't think they have a generator. So okay. Maybe ask fire chief. All right, the next one was, um, and this is some um, adequate housing and an update of the uh, housing <coughs> production plan. That's something that the regional planning agency could help with, the housing production plan. That's something that a regional planning agency can do, because if your housing production plan is out of date, you should put it in, update it, and get it certified by the state, because that way it can help you address your housing needs. I am, um, and we should check with Wayne on that, because we we've got a full-time... Um, housing coordinator? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Housing community development. I, community I just community I looked at DHCD's website and I believe that um, you probably have had certification for several years because you've been making so much progress. It's just the the thing is is that in 2020 or 2021 when the new census numbers comes out, you may fall behind oh, again. Okay, right? so yeah. Okay. So it might be something that you just want to do maybe with DLTA funds or. We were gonna write it. Down. When we send out the DLT letters this week, DLTA letters this week. All right, great. So what you want to do is uh, check with check with your guy, check the status, and then uh, work with OCPC towards an update. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what they do. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we also have the Affordable Housing Trust that is part of that process. Right. And that'll be part of the whole process. All right. Um, disruption of the school schedule and the impacts on society of these things. We've talked about the extreme storms, the flood drought cycle, and the extreme temperatures. And we talk about, we started, started by talking about kids and being you know, lethargic in school, you can't teach, it gets too hot, but then we started digging deeper and think, yeah, it affects the parents who have to come pick up the kids at 10.30 because they have to get out of school before the high, the high heat of the day. Um, then it affects the home life, it affects the social life, it affects the traffic patterns in town. A whole bunch of stuff. So when the building committee looks at this new school, they might want to think about incorporating air conditioning or yeah, in, at least in certain areas so that if when as the temperatures rise, like considerations for more extreme temperatures in the future. Or, or, or windows that open. Windows that open or, you know, the building it at the right angle so you don't have the <coughs> sun coming in or whatever, whatever they... This building. Height. It was built to get across for well, those yeah, are just all things to consider. Are there, you know, before and when you're building, it's things you can think about. So you know, They'll incorporate green solutions, I'm sure, like greener commu green communities. Actually, yeah, with your, the fact that you're a green community, you can yeah. look at building retrofits to make them more energy efficient. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, maybe we'll say, uh, look at building retrofits, use your green community status. Yeah. I'm not going to use Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have had like eight grants. You have one that's still open right now. All right. Um, CERT team and... So uh, generically, I think, you know, it suggests that, that suggests that um, there's retrofitting to be done, but we're, are we pretty much, Completed the retrofitting? Thing? No. Oh, okay, okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, um, the CERT team, the Shelters Network, we talked about that, but that's something. I'll probably, I'm sure it'll be addressed downstairs if the chief's still here. And As we think it's a positive here right, because they yeah, have they have oh, the ability to shelter in place because they have the MRC yeah, and the CERT team. It was a strength. So. Yeah, I, I think it is. I mean, we have CERT and MRC, we've come. Yeah. There's nothing to really to kind of keep on keeping on this one. Right. 
Zoning. We had that. Right, zoning. We just looked at that. On yeah, the, I think the big thing is keeping yeah. those people active because a lot of people go through the training and then they never oh, actually. And we've gone through so many MRC coordinators. So it's, you know, how do you do that? When you had one, it yeah. was really good. And, and, yeah. and then she quit and now we have a new one. And it's, it's a little bit engaging, engaging people when there are issues. So it's not the same five people or six people trying to get other people involved in the community because it takes pressure off the public safety people and even like the town hall staff and the emergency mm -hmm. management directors and things because it's hard to be sheltering trying to set up shelters and staffing them and doing all the other stuff you're doing during an emergency right. so yeah. just having so, someone to take names and pop up and register people very very yeah you know find out what their unique set of problems are what their services they might need Okay, so we talked about revisit zoning, but we talked about that under environment. We talked about revisiting the Board of Health regs. We talked about that yeah. under environment. And the last one has oh, come up I once. One, yeah. Sorry, one thing oh. to add. Uh, we mentioned last time an automatic cesspool upgrade bylaw does not regulation. exist. Yeah, regulation. Regulation. Yeah. Yeah. So we could maybe add that up in the septic section. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. And the last thing we said is the strength and vulnerability, Stone Hill College. Obviously, Stone Hill adds a lot to the community. We talked about the impact on the farming community, the environment. Um, obviously, commerce during the year, you have seasonal population, increases population, but it also increases the stresses on community services. Yeah. Well, so we talked talk about how many visits the uh, local yeah. fire and police have had to make, uh, yes. other yeah. things. So what about Stone Hill? Uh, um, is there a special plan that we want? How do we work with them now? How should we work with them? Um, how should we work with them in the face of? Uh, I know under emergency planning for Board of Health, for, um, through our coalition, that we've been trying to get closed pods. Um, sorry for the acronyms for no, no. different different things. Uh, and, and we've got one signed, an MOU signed with the Lincoln Nursing Home that if an anthrax attack happened right, or right. something like that, we bring the drugs to them, don't bring your people to us. Right. Trying to get the same scenario set up with Stillman College and you know, <coughs> based on that idea, <coughs> keep them in place, don't take them out of place. I mean, I don't know if that can correlate to this at all, but you know, actually, try not to reinvent the wheel, reinvent the wheel. But no, but actually that's a good thing. Um, have an MOU with Stonehill College. An MOU with Stonehill. Yeah. Uh, no. MOU. So. On preferred practices. Yeah. Yeah, I know we cover the whole litany of things under this because we yeah. cover health, environment, flooding, things like that, almost like a shelter in place type of thing. Yeah. But, okay, so I'm on you. You know, could they offer help relief when sheltering? If, like, when it's, you know, do they have room, like, say, in the summer when temperatures are higher? They do a lot AC, of camps. A lot of camps. Stay, stay there. Yeah. I, I must do. I register sports camps yeah. as one camp, but under that they probably do every week during yeah, the time. Yeah, they do PCC and, over there. They yeah, do PCC, a lot. Of, yeah. 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 But then the but then the terms that would be not the terms, but the topics that such an MOU would That's address because right. I don't we, really know. Yeah, what would we want to emphasize really with that the MOU right now? What you, you just said you have one with um, vaccines, uh, epidemics. Yeah, pandemics. Yeah. Pandemics. Um, so that, that, that's one from a health perspective. Yeah. Then you could look at it for um, We have it like a camp. Our camp, if there's a natural disaster, yeah. if there's some reason we can't yeah. stay, we actually will go to Stone Hill. Shelters. Shelters. Yeah. Sheltering. Yeah. They just have so many big facilities over there. Yeah. You know, oh, and, it's, you know, and it's still growing. They're building. I was driving through the last yeah. week. The two business weeks ago. center and the welcome center. Yeah. Hey, they're getting an off on pan. Okay. <laughs> oh, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they are, are they really? Yeah. Now, Sarah, we want to do the lightning round, right? Go yep. back there. Here we go. Let's try to get it done in five minutes. Oh, so, no, yeah, we want to get downstairs by noon. That's our time. Yeah. We've got to get out of this room by okay. noon and be downstairs. Okay. Okay? All right, so, so I, we did this one because it was so important right away, but that's what we're doing. High, medium, low. Short term, long term, or ongoing, so it's going to be just letters. All right, first one. Who's it broke? 
Verify ownership, keep up good communication, regular observation of the dam and culverts. Medium ongoing. Medium ongoing? Consensus? Okay. All right. All right, same thing with uh, Main Street. Yeah. Establish a regular um, maintenance schedule and watch the levels. Same. As needed. Medium, medium on All right, all the, basically all the dams in the hazard mitigation plan. Kind of under that thing, medium on one. We just singled out a couple of them off the top. Okay, the culvert and elm. Maintain, check with, um, check to see if it's uh, oversized, uh, or undersized. And talk check with the owner. owner. Yeah. The owner about that. Medium short term? Medium short. Yeah. Yeah, medium short, okay. All right, we'll see if that's a, that's a high, all right. Mm -hmm. That turned high. Um, stream continuity database for culverts and streams, it'd be the same thing. Uh, look at the database. Check what the impediments to the stream might be and revisit or maybe as necessary. Medium, medium on going? Yeah. Kind of like what we do with the culverts up there or the dams. Okay. Rolling pines, package treatment. Uh, it's going to probably be short term. And I would say it's probably going to be on the, the higher priority, but it's going to be taken care of by D. Okay, so you can do you could do high slash medium power. Yeah. Right, because it's gonna run on that on that schedule. And that's gonna be short term. Okay. Bay Road. Uh priority stormwater retrofit. So it's 224 Bay Road? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, that's yeah, 224, yeah. Um it's medium and long term. Yeah, okay. Septic management, that'd be town one. All the things we talked about with septic management. It's ongoing. It's ongoing. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to throw an age out there. When it, <laughs> I think it's, it's medium because it's it's okay. it's definitely in, in need, but. Yeah. You know, it's. Okay. No, why are you holding back time. on the age? Huh? You, I, I was going to ask, why are you holding back on the age? Yeah, because I, you know, I think it's an issue. I just don't think it's. Tomorrow. Right. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, as opposed to something like 305 Turnpike where it's high, short term, and then going. Right. Yeah. That's it's a, happening that's now. Infrastructure. We see it now. Yeah. Right. Okay, 80 Prospect, localized flooding, the broken culvert. We also here talked about the cranberry bog program option, which means like short, short term. term. Yeah. 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 Is this for 80 Prospect? Yeah. Okay. This is the cranberry bog guy who's in. Permitting with the state right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. short so be short term, long term, I'm going. A short term. Okay. And it's I mean, the yeah. so I don't know it's medium in terms of a priority. Okay. Uh, I didn't, has the flooding happened this year? It just might be a good time to try to get negotiate that. Yeah, okay. yeah, it is. Right. Also oh, turn to the high. wetlands. Yeah, make so it maybe high, make it high. because if he's in permitting now, yeah. maybe yeah. it needs oh, to be high to medium? High yeah, medium. high to medium. Okay. High to medium. Yeah. Prospect of the railroad railway. We're checking size and state of catch basin here. He's high because he's right. It's happening now too. High, okay. medium, short term. High, medium, short. Okay. All right. Uh, Burgess Street. That's uh, the dog leg. Uh, I don't think that that's. It, you said it. Oh, you yeah. Got you got here for the good stuff. We're oh, prioritizing. Oh, the state, the state of the culvert, high, medium, low, short term, long term, medium, short term. It's all, all it is is just put your head on the, you know, the side of the road. <laughs> Doesn't seem medium to me, but I don't know. What do I know? <laughs> what would you say? What do you I would, yeah, I wouldn't consider it. A, I mean, well, for what? For when it happens and yeah. how often it happens, I don't think it's a even a medium priority. Okay. So be low and ongoing? Yeah, uh, that's what I would say. All right. Well, it didn't happen, didn't happen this week, and we were getting flooding in a lot of places. Right. Okay, so what? 
doing uh, medium to low when I go in? Because you can do medium to low just like you do high <coughs> Up to you. Exactly. <coughs> you. You, you live there. It's like brunch. Low. It's low and I'm low. I, I, don't, I, I don't know why and when, but. Mm. All right, the electric. Um, obviously, this is going to be on. National grids right out too, but some street has path ball thing. It's the electric. I'd say it's low and ongoing because they're gonna, the they next one kind of covers it. Yeah. Okay. Electric utilities generally, town wide. Look at what's going on, vulnerable spots, the whole bit. Yeah, we talked about veg management here. We talked about the new substation. Definitely ongoing. That's right. I think that's medium said, high, at least medium high and ongoing. And that was cool because it was um, your comment that really struck me. It said, look at everything, small and large, in equal terms. And that would, that would connote a plan, really take a good look at it. So high to moderate and ongoing. Yeah. Because yeah. power outages are going to keep happening. And even if you're doing the new substations, there's going to be time and in between. The trees. Yeah, the yeah, they're going to keep dying and keep yeah. growing older. Yeah. Uh, the communication system, we said that was a strength. And um, the housing authority could use this, could use some uh, right. Right. Yeah. 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 communication. Check on the radio. Yeah. So, uh, moderate, ongoing, uh, high, medium, low. Yeah. Um, Is that a high, medium, or low? For the, the housing authority communication? Because um, you were the ones that were singled out. And right. The ones yeah. strength. Well, we'll see. Uh, I would say it's medium. Um, okay. Uh, but it might. But if I find out that they resolved the issue, I can't be certain. I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's um, okay. The report's not going to be written tomorrow. You can no, call in okay. or send an email. Okay. All right. So what I'll, what I'll do is I'll put. Medium for now, and I won't put an ongoing or anything because if it's been done, it's been done. And just check with check with Pam. Yep. Right. Check with Pam W. <laughs> okay. Um, limited public transit. Is that high, medium, low, short term, long term, ongoing? Uh, I think that's low and it's ongoing uh, at this point. It's going to be a negotiated process, yeah. probably. Yeah. But it's important. It's important enough to be in this list, and as long as it's on this list, it's eligible. Uh, the agreement with the, we don't need anything that that's a strength. The agreement for wastewater treatment, and then the clean energy, that's a strength. And what we want to do is um, strengthen our renewable energy, um, especially new subdivisions, and um, look at microgrid possibilities. Well, that's ongoing. Yeah, that's ongoing. I'd say yeah, that's so. Ongoing. Low and ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's something, if it's something you already asked for. But. Although, although it could connect with um, the zoning of the the zoning project. Yeah. Which, since Mass Audubon already has the MVP model. Okay. This ongoing. Yeah. Um, moderate. Low to moderate. Low to moderate. Okay. I even think Except I'm seeing that. I was just going to say, I even think the communication bullet, even if it's not addressing the housing authority issue, it's always ongoing because there's always new people that you have to add on to the communication chain and you have to maintain the chain and there's radios that need to be replaced and just because these storms are getting more frequent. So it's going to become... Strength. Uh, we want to evaluate the land for flood storage capacity, overlay the GI maps, and see how we look, and uh, then overlay our master plan and um, the uh, aquifer information on that to see what we can do, how we can do, how we can make this, something strong stronger. Is that? It, look, it looks like short term and ongoing. It looks like there's some, some things we can do right away. Okay. And some things that we just have to keep checking on. So is it high priority, medium, or low priority? Well, if we have money, it becomes a high priority. <laughs> it's a source of funds. All right. I am going. All right, we did that. Strong local weather bylaw, we can evaluate it. It's ongoing. You, you let the public tell me. So is, that's it higher, is it higher? Is it higher? I would say it's low because we yeah. already have it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Okay, low and ongoing. Um, forest management. 
implement our existing plans, um, look at cooperative work between all the groups, um, look at work with various owners, look for grants for regional uh, monies, especially in the face of climate change, and integrate the climate change component into our plans. High, medium, low, short term, long term, ongoing, I'm say probably ongoing. Medium, ongoing, uh, does that sound good? Yeah. Medium? Are you good with that? Yeah. Medium and ongoing. Huh. It's something that's gonna... You could, yeah, it could be medium high, high because okay. it, there's certain pockets I think that are high priority. Yeah. I'm sure once you start evaluating it. Right. Well, we get, you realize, I mean, I, this didn't come up, as just one of the great factoids. Um, there was a little microburst, right, of, in terms of the increased, mm -hmm. flux of, uh, increased storm events. There's a little microburst right in Norton. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then in, in those November, I mean, in the March um, Northeasters, mm -hmm. we lost, I think, close to 43 <coughs> old mature pines Right on, Bay right, Road. right on the edge of Wheaton Farm at that old historic house. The White so, House, wow. Linden, and it White. was just like this huge oh swath of old trees, yep. and wow. yep. so that's the, I mean that's the that's the vulnerability. Right. It's on the access road to station too. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's really? important. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was nuts. That's important. It's, it's so. So, so forest management with all our old trees is a pretty high priority with the high groundwater. High moderate and ongoing. And yes. higher frequency of storms like and, we yeah. saw this spring. So I, I don't think we really articulated that, so I just wanted to get it out there. Okay. Just like agricultural built. land, um, look at new partnerships, work with young farmers, explore diverse, diversity in farming, and uh, work with age, uh, organizations like CMAC and our local ag Farm to really get the idea of farming out there, like active farming. High medium, low, probably ongoing, I would imagine. You want ongoing, snow. yes. Yeah. High, medium, low, combination? I would say, from our point of view, it's medium because it's, it's something that's got to keep systematically being done. It takes a long time to set up a farm, so it's not something that's high impact. All of a sudden, you're going to change it. All right. I think that's Okay, vector-borne diseases. And we don't do education awareness, <coughs> web links, kiosk materials, and all that other stuff. Uh, ongoing, definitely. Short term, uh, too. Short, short, short term and ongoing. Uh -huh. Seems like it, it's happening now. High priority, yeah. too. High. Term, it would be high priority. Yeah. Yeah. Public health. Yeah, yeah, public health is a high priority. Yeah. Better environmental education. This is where I put the note about the interagency communication and letter yeah information mm. sharing. yeah I'd say it's a high priority because it's easily doable I think with yeah. there's not going to be a lot preventing us I think it's just a coordination issue yeah letting you know they're ready downstairs yeah <laughs> no <laughs> that's probably work and I always I told them I was going to be here so that's their problem all right so high and short ongoing mm -hmm. yeah short ongoing yeah Okay, so short and ongoing, and it's high priority? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was that environmental education? I mean, I mean, I mean, okay. Stormwater management? Stormwater management? I, I would say high to medium. Yeah, because yeah. flooding yeah. is your biggest. Least, yeah. And, um, ongoing? The more water we get into the ground, the better off we are. What more detention basins? All right, don't want to fluctuation, we already said refer back to infrastructure. We handle that there. Um, let's see, oh, the vegetation. Revisit what we consider invasives and transition vegetation. So check with the sources of information, would be the state, management, places like that, to look at um, update on lists of vegetation as needed, especially vegetation that is transitioning into our area. And do likewise with invasives. Things that maybe used to be invasives may not become our native plants. So we need uh, more education on succession, on the succession process, and the movement of these types of things. So is that high, medium, or low? That type of activity with interagency activity, other sources, and contacting people like me and the state. The education. We're talking about need public forums. I think for me personally, it'd just be, it would be a low, medium, but ongoing because it's going to yeah. continue to change. Right. I agree with that. 
That it's kind of the, it'd be nice to do, but don't have to. But, right. But other things are going to Right. right. Okay. If we're flooding out, that's this more important. This is also where the cold water fisheries discussion landed. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's a, that seems like a quick fix, too. Yeah. All the rest are taken care of. Um, good. Oh, there's the zoning one. Yeah, the zoning, um, and that's the MVP grant. So, so let's tell MVP that that's a high priority. Okay. Hi, this is Tom You should always look at your other, uh, and the rest are taken care of. Great. All right. And then we'll, we'll make it. We have two minutes. We'll make it. <laughs> there we go. Turnpike comes up again. It says refer to infrastructure. But we need proper management. We'll make sure that's in there. And that was a high end of, in the infrastructure too. But we just threw in the need for proper management. You gotta do it. Get the right people in there. So does uh, it need a new rank? It's a high uh, priority. No, I don't think so. Because we have high priority in. Okay. Yeah. Um, the retrofitting the elementary school, the Iowa Elementary School, needs funds to enhance its uh, capabilities for mm -hmm. sheltering service. Well, it sounds like that. That's at least medium to high and short term because yep. you don't have the center school done, so you really can't fall back on it, right? So. Hey, Jim. Yep. Hey, Jim, in short term. And it might be low hanging fruit. Yeah, it might be. The fire department might even have some grants that are available to them too. Emergency. Well, he raised the, it. He was looking for more funds. Yeah. yeah. The that was a longer term plan. That was for the plan once. When and if we have a new school. Right, right. Right. <coughs> okay, uh, Frogingham Health and Recreation Bloom Center. Um, short term, we said it's a short term facility right now, daytime uh, working, uh, daytime weekday opportunity, except when the CERT team comes in, you can expand the weekend capabilities. Is that ever going to change, or is that kind of like. I don't think it'll change unless we get another building. So probably yeah. low and ongoing. It mm -hmm. is what it is. Right. And will be what it will be, what you can do. Right. And so the other the other building will actually come in and meet some of the needs. Okay. Yeah, because it's a historic structure. Yeah. And now about uh, parking terrace and the lease, we we uh, grouped these and said uh, continue the capital improvements and the board of health cert um, outreach and services to those places. <coughs> I would say medium and ongoing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, the adequate housing and the housing plan. The housing would, production plan. I would say I, I personally think those are medium to high and ongoing or short term maybe short -term even if it's if it's expired because a it's an easy thing to check off and also yeah. puts you in better position to, for other grants. They ask you now do you have a housing production plan that's been approved by DHCD. If, if we have it, it'll change. In right, the that's, that's a short term. We'll, we'll identify that. Okay, yeah. that's, that's, that's a short term. term. It's not on, your, on DHCD's list, it's expired or it's expiring. That's it, that's important. All right, yeah. the disruption of school, the school schedule, its impacts on society. So, I mean, that's. No, it's not that you can't that do it. It kind of is what it is, and it's going to be ongoing um, the school day. But we can find ways to. Obviously, combat it, you know. Building retrofits, um, use your green community it's, status. The, the, the school thing, I think, is low, low and ongoing. I was going to say, what's going on? Medium to low? Or just low to low? Okay. Cert um, <coughs> team. Um, strength. Yeah, it's, it's a strength, yeah. Uh, visit zoning we already covered, Board of Health Regs we already covered, and then Stonehill. Not going. Getting the MO with the MOE with Stonehill. We don't have one right now. Right, so you want to start it with now. Is that a high priority, a medium priority, or a low priority? Low priority. Low priority? Low priority. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of this is just getting it on paper so that we. All right, now we have to pick a top project from each category, and that's we're going to do that with. Uh, we're going to go down and put a sticker on it. We got the colored papers here. So, do you want to save Turnpike for social? If he wants one for every category, then, then Turnpike. We then want one for every category. Then we've we got blue. lots of infrastructure. So, the blue will be environmental. Blue is environmental. The pink is infrastructure. 
I'm a blue social. Social. Yeah. Right, so that's three oh five turnpike. Okay. Yeah. That's three oh five turnpike right away. Okay. okay. Right. Does anybody have any the disagreement pink, on that? The pink no. is infrastructure. Yeah. Okay, that one's harder. And the yellow is environment. So you want me to write three oh five turnpike? All right. right. Don't you think? Yeah. Right. Everybody thinks that's the yeah. highest priority. Okay. okay. Now, infrastructure. What would be the big one here for infrastructure? I'm going to say, and I don't mean to throw the, the ball at Andrea, but the stormwater. Oh, no. That's like no? hot. That's totally, I totally yeah. agree. I think stormwater is like going to be the biggest thing with, you know, the environment change. Environment. Flooding. Yeah. 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 and water quality. Yeah. Okay, so stormwater. But I know yeah. it's your bag, so. Uh, no, it's also yeah. Greg. It's also Greg's one. So so stormwater oh, yeah. is pink, right? Yeah. 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 Stormwater is pink. You want to write the words consider green options so that you get that nature? Yeah. 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 Consider green options. I thought we had that in the. It is. It's yeah, all in it the. It, yeah. Okay, so consider green. Yeah. Well, we actually have them already considered. What we're talking about is okay. make it, maybe make it mandatory. Okay. Because we already have the courage. Now we want to, you know, if you can do it, you will do it. All right, while well, she's doing the social one for me, it's the environmental one. Thing is, is once you do it, other people will follow you. Yeah, yeah. People yeah, set yeah. you. You know what I mean? You're There's a lot of your environment. <coughs> yeah. Oh gosh. And you're gonna remember, this is—they're all relevant. They're all gonna be in your plan. But if you had the opportunity to do one right away, which one do you think would make the most impact to do right away? Forest management. Just from my point of view. I was going to say coordinate our newspaper, our, our newsletter list. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's an easy one if it's well, going in the plan cost anyway. Either. So, I mean, right. if you had to get it, if you were going to get an action grant for something, what what would you, you know, what could $400,000 do for you? Well, that's what I was thinking because <laughs> it costs a lot of money to cut down <laughs> trees. <laughs> and that's what I was thinking. You know, that's how I think yeah. about it. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not going to say because it's going to be it's going to be you know work that I've got got to get done. So yeah. somebody else tell me what I what's my highest priority. <laughs> yeah, that, that think about you now citizens of the community. They're all town officials, but what related to town park? But citizens of the community. What do you think would, would your priority be? I mean, the vector-borne illness thing has got to be pretty high up there, mm -hmm. as well as the stormwater, because it seems like it's a. In terms of vector-borne, it's short money. I like being better yeah. environmental education. Now, in terms of your point about the money, this is the section where most of the tree management yeah. actions landed. Yeah. That, so that I don't for, for protecting tree power, tree for, for protecting That's the what forest, you do, right? to inspire. You bring in your private yeah. okay. forest, yeah. your national grid, yeah. your town forest, everybody yeah. owns trees and say, let's look at this and let's look at, you know, That's proper forestry management. So forest management, that's what you said, yeah. Jen. I don't know. Jen might be right. right. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't happen often, but. <laughs> <laughs> Note in the minutes. No, <laughs> Notated. You know, and like I said, the other so thing. So make sure you write that down. The other thing to <laughs> remember, too, is that once your plan is certified and you go after other state grants, this actually gets you points, bonus points mm -hmm. for other state grants, too. So yeah. that's why we keep the whole list memorializing, because anything in here is possible. There are a number of sources of funds. But this one, you might be able to get that big punch that initiates a process that you can keep as ongoing. It's not, it's, it, I got a term for it, and it, it hasn't really hit on with the, with, with the community out there, but I call it cosmic planning. Cosmic planning. I like that. List everything, yeah, and when the opportunity arises, it becomes your most important thing yeah. because the money's available. Right. I think in right. climate change has got to be incorporated into all of our plans now. Every yeah. plan we, we do, should. almost, yeah. you know, open space, master plan, so well, that's economic I think, development. I think one of the advantages of this process was Forest bringing all right. the departments in yeah. to sort of think about it so that when mm -hmm. they go back to their regular everyday job, it's it's in the back of their mind. Forest management. Woohoo! Yep. All right. Okay, downstairs. We yeah. did it. Yeah. We did oh, stand, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Right. Now, who wants to report out on our group this week? Andrea. 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 Oh. Come on, you're the best. I'm the lucky girl. <laughs> How about you? No. You're an elected official. That's all right. Uh